We, ha we do have quorum, and uh, the minutes uh, will be approved at our next meeting. The minutes from uh, 4 21 22 will be, uh, like I say, at our next meeting. Okay, we have uh, a hearing, a continued hearing from, uh, from previous days, long built homes. It was a notice of intent for the development of Hunters Hill subdivision, uh, file number 17441. It's continued. Anyone here to on that? It's tabled. Okay, uh, I'm looking for a motion to uh, table the uh, hearing till next month. It, it's already tabled till July. Um, okay. So that will be heard uh, next month. Uh, no, July. July 21st. Oh, ju okay, sorry. July 21st uh, uh, of this year. Our uh, next hearing is a comprehensive subdivision to construct 135 single family homes uh, and 13,137 linear feet of associated roadway off of Forest Street, file number 17443. Uh, Joshua Glass has requested a, con a continuance until 519, uh, which is today. Josh? Good evening, commissioners. Uh, I'm actually primarily here to observe. We recently received the comments from your peer review engineer, Beta Group, who has two representatives here this evening. I think the uh, intention of this evening's meeting was for them to inform you of their review. Uh, I'm certainly here and happy to answer any questions, but our engineers are undergoing additional evaluation of the site pursuant to some comments received from this and other boards and are still uh, actively working through the comments received from Beta Group a few, a week or two ago, I think. Okay, so thank I, you. I think in some respects I'll turn the floor over to them. Okay. And uh, your name is? Uh, Jonathan Nero, environmental scientist with Beta Group. Actually, it would help if you rolled it over here. Uh, the cords, uh, sorry. There you go. How's that? Thank you. Jack, right. are you, you good with that? So again, uh, Jonathan Nero with Beta Group, environmental scientist, peer reviewer on the project, joined by Gary James, also with Beta Group. So it's good to meet all you in person. I just wanted to uh, go over our letter. Um, I was gonna start with the wetlands end of things and then turn it over to Gary and he can discuss stormwater with you. So I know you're all um, fairly familiar with this site. Um, Beta Group reviewed the uh, resource area delineation that was performed a few years ago, which is still valid for the site. About um, two months ago, um, myself, Lisa, Todd Pilling from Dighton, Gary James from Beta, and the applicant and his team met at the site and did a site walk um, to review uh, the project in the field and go over existing conditions. Um, so based on our review of the plans and that site walk, we issued the letter that's in front of you today. Um, so just to go over some sort of high level um, wetlands issues that we identified at the site and with the filing. Um, Starting at the site entrance, there's about an 1,800 square foot isolated wetland um, that is proposed to be filled, and that's required as part of this development to get access to the site. It's my understanding that planning board's requiring two access points, and one of them has an isolated wetland right in the middle of it. So the application states that they're required to fill this wetland and um, that no mitigation is required. Uh, however, you folks' bylaw does state that isolated wetlands are jurisdictional as well, and they do require mitigation, generally in the form of wetland replication. Um, so that was one of the first things we saw on the site, and as we headed up the hill to the top of the uh, ridge, there is 
uh, what's identified on the plans as a potential vernal pool. Um, going, this was apparent when we reviewed the site a few years ago, and it was very apparent now as well that this is a, it isn't certified, but it is a certifiable vernal pool. Um, I didn't get a chance to bring them with me tonight, but I will send them to Lisa. I have a number of photos of um, both wood frog and spotted salamander egg masses within this pool. And it was about a foot or two deep with water at the time of the site visit. And those egg masses were all laid um, within the months preceding that site visit. Uh, so the development proposes to essentially one of our big comments on this project is the development essentially proposes to box this vernal pool in with units. Um, the development is respecting the bylaw no disturb zone to the vernal pool and is leaving some forested area around it. However, the concern is that even without filling the vernal pool, they're effectively rendering it ineffective for use by wildlife. Um, it's gonna be surrounded with homes. There's gonna be no connectivity for vernal pool species to come up from a wetland on one side of the property, breed, and then exit the vernal pool to other wetlands on the property. Um, in addition, we have concerns with um, the viability of the pool in terms of its hydrology. One thing we've asked is that the applicant take a look at whether it's surface water or groundwater that's feeding this vernal pool and um, come up with a water budget to determine if this development is effectively going to dry up the pool by changing grades and runoff patterns. And the last kind of big piece to our review is the buffer zone component. Um, aside from the isolated wetland, this project does not propose to fill any bordering vegetated wetlands. However, work is going to occur right up to the 25 foot no disturb zone under your bylaw. Um, in some cases, the plans actually show clearing, encroaching slightly into the 25 foot no disturb zone. And that sort of leaves, leaves us asking um, if the current design is developable in real field conditions without encroaching on the 25 foot no disturb zone. Uh, we've asked that the applicant take a closer look at the buffer zone at the site and how it protects the functions of the adjacent resource areas and provide some additional information on how they'll be able to conduct this work within buffer zone without adversely impacting um, the adjacent wetlands, specifically um, you know, how they can go about clearing of the tree canopy and existing vegetation without altering um, wildlife habitat. In many cases, although wildlife habitat is protected for the wetlands, those same species require <laughs> some width of upland buffer to be able to migrate uh, throughout the site. So those are our high level wetlands comments um, and I'd like to turn it over, it's okay, to Gary James to discuss his stormwater review. Gary. Uh, my name is Gary James, I am an engineer with the Beta Group. Good evening, gentlemen. <laughs> some, some familiar faces here. Uh, we did do a, a review of this uh, project relative to the bylaw and the current standards. And we have quite a few what I would consider to be high level uh, comments relative to this. Uh, primarily, if you look at the backside of the development, the big issue is, is that there was a zone A back there so that all of, all of the storm water that currently discharges to the backside, the, you know, the wetlands around that zone A are considered an outstanding resource water. So the applicant is gonna to have to modify their design relative to that requirement. They're gonna to have to provide an inch. We've also requested that they increase the overall, uh, uh, Im improve the efficiency of the storm water, stand storm water measures that they have implemented in the backside to try and get a little higher quality on it because they're just barely meet, they're just meeting the minimum requirement under the standards. The other issue is that uh, in accordance with the standards based on an interpretation that we've received from uh, Southeast region, the minimum setback associated with these structures is gotta be 50 feet from the wetlands and that's measured from the downgrading and toe of the embankment. So what they have done on their previous design is pretty much held that 25 foot is the downstream toe. So 
all of the all of the uh, those two basins are going to have to get moved back to be able to meet that that uh, 50 foot. Uh, the other issue, the other real significant issue that I see is they they have a uh, an agreement with the planning board relative to this, but the planning board agreement specifically stated that they would uh, file a definitive in, in conformance with the requirements of the standards. But the standards have certain requirements in association with the stormwater basins. And the way they have them designed, they would require waivers from the definitive subdivision standards in order to, in order to uh, meet those standards. So we have requested the, either they request the waiver or indicate to us that in fact the waiver will be granted from the, from the planning board. There's no sense in uh, going, going much further if the planning board is not going to grant the waiver relative to the construction standards associated with these basins and the embankments themselves. Uh, specifically, I, under, the, under the definitive subdivision regulations, they've got to be 50 feet from the perimeter property line, the embankment does. And there's also a requirement on the side slope. I know DP's requirements are 3 to 1, but the planning board has a uh, requirement of 5 to 1. We have quite a laundry list. The other big thing that we ask them to review is that they're predicting an awful lot of water coming down on Forest Street. There's not that much of a system on Forest Street. We have asked them to go back and take a quick look at that and actually inquire with the DPW if the DPW was actually experiencing any issues with that runoff coming down into the coming down onto Forest Street itself and being collected in the system. And the other, the, the other important component of that is that they intend to tie into that at the two entrances. So if they're, if they're going to tie into a system that's already being taxed to the max, then the answer is, is that we'd like to see them, you know, take a look at it and see if it has to be upgraded to be able to convey the flows. Other than that, like I said, we did have quite a laundry list. Uh, the design engineers have been made aware of uh, a number of these comments. Even before we issued the letter, I believe we had a, we had a meeting with them and, and gave them some of these. Okay, so that is all in the works then for them to view your recommendations and to get back to you and uh, you will review their <laughs> results. We'll review their results and see, yeah. Okay. And, I, and like I said, I'd like to see specifically what the DPW has to say about the system on Forest Street. Okay. Great. We really appreciate uh, you reviewing this so thoroughly, and uh, it's, it's important. Um, I made sure I forwarded the email um, to the Stormwater Committee and the Planning Board. Um, and I believe, did you send copies? Who did you send copies to? I believe it was at the City of Taunton. Okay. Uh, yes, we sent it to uh, your offices. Uh, we sent it to the conservation agent in Taunton and um, copied over to the uh, applicant as well. Okay. Um, one thing I did want to point out, uh, one comment um, was when we do um, get comments back from DI Trust or an outback that we um, will have to almost like reopen the hearing. So I think that sh the, the abutters should be notified and a newspaper ad should be placed at that time as well. All right. That was on page. It's 11 pages, sorry. Um, yeah. Okay. Page four. Joshua, do you know when you're, they will have comment? Did they give you an estimate? Some component of that's outside of our control. Uh, the health agent has requested a certain number of test fits be performed. And he wants to be present for a good number of those. So we're working on scheduling that, which will take some time. And they're working on the mm -hmm. uh, redesign and respond. 
months right now. So okay. I would request two months. I don't think it'll be done by next month, just as a practical matter okay. in terms of scheduling for the excavator and the volume of test pitch requested. Okay. I'm going to give you a continuance form tonight so that you can fill that out, just hand it over. So that would be our July 21st meeting. Okay, is that a formal request to continue to July? Yeah. Okay, uh, do we have a motion to continue the, the uh, hearing till July uh, 21st? I'll make a motion to continue to uh, July 21st. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, next we have uh, Reed Brothers Farms. Uh, file number 17-447. Uh, this was a continued hearing from from um, January. Yeah, I heard from the uh, applicant's representative out back today, and um, they're requesting a continuance to June 16th because uh, they're waiting for uh, DEP to issue um, comments on their water quality certificate request. So... Um, I did attend a meeting uh, with DEP and we went over everything, so I'm hoping that they can get their water quality certificate soon so that maybe in the fall they can start this restoration. Now, this is the uh, solar. No. Oh, this is sorry. Reed, Reed oh, Brothers sorry. Restoration. Oh, Reed, okay. I'm waiting. Okay, that's. Uh, 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 I, I was in the wrong, wrong okay. lot. Okay, yeah. do we have a. Um, Motion to continue Reed Brothers till June 16th. I make a motion that uh, Reed Brothers Farm Limited uh, I'll second that. Until, uh, okay, motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, can, passed. Okay, okay, notice of intent request from Ross Boisel, 170 Beach Street, uh, Dighton, uh, file number 17449, to replace an existing failed septic system in accordance with Title V. Okay, so they're still trying to address Board of Health comments, so they've requested a continuance till June, June 16th. Okay, <laughs> is there a motion to continue it? Make a motion we continue the hearing. Uh, I'll second. Till, uh, 16th of June. <clears throat> I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed. Okay. Uh, we, another uh, con hearing that was continued uh, was a notice of intent from David Burdos, uh, 2396 uh, Pleasant Street, Dighton. And that was a file number 17 459. Uh, looking for a retroactive approval for constructing an exist in addition to an existing single family uh, house. Thank you. You too. <clears throat> Can everybody make sure they sign in? Uh, there's a clipboard. Sorry, it was supposed to be passed around. Roy Delano from Lighthouse Land Surveying. Hi. Hi. I'm the last man standing. There were three others who knew all about this project that um, either had conflicts or things come up tonight. So I'm four string, um, not brought up from AAA or single A, but more like T ball. So I'll, <laughs> I'll try my best here. And I've uh, 50 years of surveying, I've located a lot of wetlands, but uh, never done a conservation hearing, but um, I got briefed for 15 minutes and um, I'll give it a shot, so. Sounds good. Before you get started, did you get, did they get the email yesterday from Division Marine Fisheries? Okay, good. 
Yes. All right. Yep. All right, so um, I think, Lisa, you probably have worked with Rick quite a bit and met yeah. with him at the site. I was going to say, I don't recognize you. <laughs> no, I haven't, I haven't never, I know. never been to the site. They said, go do them hearing tonight and told me about it for 15 minutes. And, yeah, uh, it happens. Yep. So um, if, if I say anything that you know more about than I do or you. Of course. <laughs> so Dave, you put on an addition, 14 by 16. Um, 28 by 26. This is 28 by 26? It was all this whole section. Right oh, that whole there. section there. It's like a sunroom that actually belongs like that. I, I understand. Okay. So 135 square feet of that ended up in the floodplain. Um, Lisa, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're going to try to do some mitigation or compensation out back somewhere. For the bordering land subject to flooding? Yeah, that was, that was what that was for. Yeah. Um, and I think everybody agreed upon not doing it out in back and working along the bank. Okay. Not the bank, but the, um, the, the, land. the buffer, the 25 foot buffer. Right. Yeah. In addition to that, uh, we're looking for a, um, removable walkway to a floating, uh, floating dock, mm -hmm. um, which will, um, come on the other side of the road. Um, two, uh, 29 square feet of that is in the salt marsh, uh, 28 square feet of that would be in the BBW. Um, so that already is existing, so he's already got it in place. And, and that will be removed every season, winter season? That walkway, yep. the docks in the water, yes, the walkway, I leave there. Okay. The float, obviously, will come out. And yes, all the, everything is out of the water. Yeah. What type of float is it? Um, can you describe that float? Uh, pressure treated floating docks. Okay. Okay, so Ray Francisco wrote up a project narrative. Um, again, he had... Do you mind reading that? The whole, it's like four or five pages. Okay. You don't, I guess you don't have to, but can you summarize it? At least go through it. And... Okay. Because this is the first time that they have come before us. It's not, no one's presented it yet. Okay. Uh, the application request uh, consists of, after the fact, filing of a notice of intent to properly permit the construction of a 14 by 16 foot addition. Apparently it's a bigger addition than that, but uh, that portion is in the Correct. flood plain. To a single family house and installation of a ramp and floating dock system. All site work associated with the addition project occurred within the level areas comprised of existing maintained lawn and all structural components were designed to comply with current state and local building code regulations. The design and construction were approved by the building department and a building permit was issued to the applicant for the addition. The entire constructed addition falls, addition falls within the riverfront area and 135 square feet of the addition is located within BLSF. Which is bordering land subject to flooding. A permit was issued for the floating dock by the town of Dighton Harbor Master on February 7th, 2022. The structure consists of a four foot wide wooden ramp, which extends 2.75 feet over the river bank, four linear feet of impact. Wetland, 28 square feet of impact, and salt marsh, 29 square feet of impact. To the open water portions of the river, the float consists of a five by 20 structure that is located beyond the limits of the salt marsh system and makes no contact with the river bottom. The float is used seasonally and is typically only in place late spring to early fall. To mitigate for the existing impacts with BLSF, Bank, BBW, and salt marsh, the application is currently proposing, the application is currently proposing to place 75 linear feet of plantings 1,200 square feet in area within an existing cleared location. 
upgrading of the Rivers Bank and the BVW. Space three feet on center for a total of 25 plants as shown on the attached plan. Should I go through the shrub species? Hmm. No. no, they're okay. all native. Okay. Thank you. Bordering vegetative wetlands. Uh, well, these are the regulatory compliance. Um, I can read all of that or? Um, yeah, I don't have it in front of me, so it's up to the commission. Do you want to hear the rest of that? It's like four or five pages. Um. Uh, probably not. Okay. okay. <clears throat> I, can, I can go more toward the end here. Yeah, um, the conclusion. Yeah, given the nature of the proposed project, the extent of the proposed work, 224 square foot addition, 59 square foot of temporary ramp and float system. The proximity of the project to the regulated resource areas, the proposed mitigation, in parentheses, enhancement and pres preservation of areas maintained as lawn, and the characteristics of the affected locations, the potential for adverse impacts to resource areas regulated under the state and local bylaw regulations from the proposed activities are not anticipated to occur. But the question is, did they occur? It's, it's already done. So that was the question. I understand. So, so it was written based on like the project about to happen, but the project's already happened. So my question is, did you, when you did your building, did you use erosion controls around the perimeter and can you show that you did? No. Okay. Thank you for being honest. I mean, you know, it's just... Erosion controls onto what? What was... I... As a perimeter erosion control uh, to keep all your dirt, disturbed soil in place so n during a st storm event that we know for sure that it didn't, you know, wash down into the salt marsh or the river. So. This would be the house edition? Right. So. I haven't had any problems with anything. <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, oh, okay. When the project was going on, right. we just I know moved, told us. We moved quick. Right. Yeah. No one said anything about a conservation permit. We just went and got all our Right. We, we understand. Yeah, we understand the process maybe, um, but it is usually on the owner to get all their permits. Um, so now we're here and we appreciate that you're trying to come into compliance. So I'm really happy with the mitigation plantings and all that. I, I just, the Division of Marine Fisheries letter came in today. Today? Yeah, today, May yes, 19th. It did. Mm -hmm. Um, did you get a copy of this yet? No. Um, well, I can read this. So, this is from the Commonwealth of Mass Division of Marine Fisheries to the Dighton Conservation Commission. Um, doesn't look like he, he, he did send it to your representative, but um, I'm sorry, she. Dear Commissioners, the Division of Marine Fisheries, Mass DMF, has reviewed the revised Notice of Intent by David Burdos, 2396 Pleasant Street, to permit an existing 14-foot by 16-foot addition to a single-family home, an existing seasonal ramp and float on the Taunton River in the town of Dighton. The project was reviewed with respect to potential impacts to marine fisheries resources and habitat. The project site lies within mapped shellfish habitat for the American oyster, which is Grossostria virginica, and softshell clam Maya arenaria. Waters and or adjacent to the project site have habitat characteristics suitable for these species. Land containing shellfish is deemed significant to the interest of the Wetlands Protection Act, Section 310 CMR 10.34, and the protection of marine fisheries. The project also overlies 29 square feet of salt marsh vegetation. Salt marsh provides a variety of ecosystem services, including habitat and energy sources for many fish and invertebrate species. 
Mass DMF offers the following comments for your consideration. The project plans do not provide a profile view of the existing structure and the project narrative does not indicate the height of the ramp above, above the underlying salt marsh vegetation or how the ramp is supported. Mass DMF conducted two field studies to assess the relationship between shading, marsh growth, and dark design. These studies collectively indicated that a height to width ratio of 1.5 to 1 between the bottom of the structure and the salt marsh reduced shading and marsh loss relative to the typically required 1 to 1 height to, width, height to width ratio, 4 to 5. If this height to width ratio has not already been established between the 4 foot wide ramp and underlying salt marsh vegetation, then Mass DMF recommends replacing the ramp supports to establish a 6 foot minimum clearance between the bottom of the ramp and the salt marsh and grounded floats can disturb bottom sediments resulting in turbid turbidity and direct impacts to the benthic habitat. To minimize impacts, Mass DMF re re recommends that the bottom of the float be at least 1.5 feet, which is 18 inches, above the substrate in all coastal or estuarine habitats and at least 2.5 feet, which is 30 inches, above the substrate over map shellfish habitat at mean low water. If the existing float does not maintain that minimum clearance of mean low water, Mass DMF re recommends extending the float into deeper waters or installing pile support float stops to maintain a 2.5 clearance above, above the substrate, substrate at mean low water. And the proponent proposes 1,200 square feet of salt marsh mitigation area encompassed by a rail fence to prevent access to the mitigation site. However, the NOI does not provide for specific details regarding the monitor of the salt marsh replication areas. A salt marsh monitoring protocol should be carried out during the growing season for multiple years post planting to quantify the area of marsh vegetation, which I agree with because actually I used to do that kind of work, um, but not in a salt marsh. Um, all right, so, and then there's lots of different sources, but it's signed sincerely, Samanata Harrison, which is, she's a fisheries habitat special specialist. She CC'd Raymond Francisco of Lighthouse, John Logan, Kaylee Towns, Tom Shields, Amanda Davies, Carrie Ann Gonzalez, Emma Gallagher of Mass DMF, and Robert Boeri of Coastal Zone Management. So this just needs to be okay. considered. Okay. Uh, Sorry. Can, can we read you for a now, bedtime story? Uh, kind of separate house versus. It's all. I had them put it all in the same filing. Okay. So um, Roy and others will have to come up to see if the plan that you have complies with the. Uh, Division of Marine Fisheries, and uh, I, I mean, it seems like the house is is in good shape as far as getting well, everything. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, he yeah, it's in place. He, they yeah, admitted no, they know. didn't use erosion controls. They're re ready to do some mitigation for it. So no, no, that's what that's what yeah. I'm saying. Everything seems to be fine with that. Yeah. But as far I, I, as I, the the boat ramp. The you know the walkway and that it, it might need some uh, tweaking to comply with the uh, with with the state laws. Yeah, with with those criteria, and I also think that you know I would be okay with two years of monitoring, so two times a, a year of the salt marsh. So other than that, I don't think you have to go multiple years past that. But and someone that like Stephen Schmiel, who did the wetland work already he can do that kind of work would he coordinate with you and meet with you twice a year or every two well, he just has to write a simple okay. report hey i went right, to so the site with some photographs that i went to the site and it, either it's documented as establishing or it's not and then what happens is if it's not then it has to be fixed so that could be written into the yeah order of conditions and oh. so, so that takes care of the final item right the other item 
those two are more engineering items. Yeah, and yeah. they're calling Surveying. it a four foot wide. It's three and a half feet wide. Um, so you're not talking six feet, you're talking five feet. Yeah. Um, they still need to be addressed. Yeah. I think the commission, that's what they're saying. You're saying you'd like them to be addressed. Would right? that be, what they say is that etched in stone or do you have say in that? Well, you know what I'm saying? I mean, they recommend it, but to, to bring it up it's, higher. It's rare species habitat. I mean, we're, you know, I think the commission values that. No, I understand yeah. totally, but we are talking 29 yeah, square feet. Well, yeah, okay. I, I don't want to see you going beyond the width that, that they're recommending. Right. Uh, uh, certainly, it's, the if it's more the, the height. Th they're looking at the height. Uh, above the grass for the grass to grow. Well, also yeah. for the sunlight. angle of sunlight. And and also the float out in the water. They don't want it rubbing against the ground at low tide no. and, and, right. and wiping out all the oysters that are growing out there. Does, that, um, does your float do that? Yes, it does. It's all gone now. I guess I'm going to have to go do the other route, like go in the water and put my docks out, the 30, 40 grand route. Yeah. Further, but I don't have it. put it out further to get it out further. Yeah, okay. I can't build a sky ramp. Right. You, you, you can't meet those requirements, the height requirements. Well, oh, he can make way, yeah. But once yeah. the docks get in the water, low tide's low tide, I can only make a walk ramp. So, the, the, cha the channel, the it's channel's just, out there pretty far, yes. Uh, well, we, you know, we, we can't go against the state law, you're going to have to comply with that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, we can make the the height work. That, that's not going to work because the floats are in the water and I can't get to them, so I'm going to have to drive pylons and go through all the next row if I, I don't have the money, so I'm not going to make anything happen. Mm -hmm. Shaw's vote marina. So, um, do we well, just so we need the house then? So we need the plan edited, and then you can just we can wrap it up at the next. If you're not going to do anything with the float, you're going to remove it, right? It talk it over, figure out if that's really what you want to do. That's what I need. That's what the marine said I had to do. Can't have it this is you know this is this is not even us. This is the state, yes. yeah. uh, Division of Marine Fisheries. Uh, um, their, their requirement mm -hmm. and um, so you're going to have to discuss that and then either remove that part of the plan and or, or, or do alterations to what you have and so if it's removed I believe we can if it's removed and you, your um, and lighthouse adds that the monitoring that I, I can speak with uh, Roy about I'm sorry Rick, Ray. maybe? Ray? Ray Rick. Rick, Ray, Roy. We're Rick, all Ray. ours. <laughs> um, and then we can set that so that the plan is adjusted, and then at the next meeting, the commission will um, review the plan. We'll review the plan together beforehand. I'll review it beforehand. They'll review it at the meeting and then move forward. Well, I think the bigger hurdle now is the float. You, you can't do it. No. Right, so then that so plan just needs to take get it off the plan and come back. Yeah, so we just need a continuance signed for that because, yeah, yes, I do. What? And did you know if the um, the bill was paid for the um, newspaper ad? Oh, okay, you're Roy. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'll send an okay. email off to them to see if we're that set for a motion here then to continue. Charlie, was the bill paid for the legal? Uh, what? Was the bill paid for? I have no idea. Okay. Well, we'll have to find out for next meeting. <coughs> that was uh, Francisco. That. Uh... Yeah. <coughs> I'll email them. Lisa, we're all set for now. Do you want to see if anyone in the, uh, anyone? Okay, anyone in the group wishes to speak on the topic? Just not. 
Okay, uh, is there a motion to continue to our June meeting? I make a motion. Uh, we continue uh, Pleasant Street project till uh, 616. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Passed. Okay. Well, thank well, you. We'll see you next month with this a revised plan. Yep. And okay. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good night. Okay. Uh, we have a hearing that has been uh, continued uh, for Cecilia Franco, uh, 2732 Park Avenue and Zero Cherry Street. Um, <clears throat> okay. Brandon tonight, right? Uh, this is Brandon's um, employee. Right, Brandon well, I said this Lights. is Brandon tonight. Okay. Uh, so yes, I'm Bruce Webb. I'm senior staff scientist at Ecosystem Solutions in Warwick, Rhode Island. And just want to quickly um, what the hard fought for proof of payment for the I, I know. We're going to actually discuss that item on the agenda later on. Gotcha. Yeah, hopefully that email address is helpful. But um, so yes, I am representing the Francos this evening at 2732 Park Ave. And um, so to first address the resource areas that we have on the property, there is an isolated vegetated wetland um, that's on the property. You see on the plan, it's just in here. The area also has the outer riparian, the 100 to 200 foot uh, riverfront area is on the area, uh, on the property part of it. And the, <coughs> the property is also entirely within the uh, coastal land subject to storm flowage, but the entire neighborhood is. Um, <laughs> the reason we're here this evening is um, the Franco started work on a 30 by 36 foot um, outbuilding uh, a small garage and uh, that was subject to an enforcement order in October of 2021 um, and as a result we have filed our NOI to retroactively seek approval from the Commission for that structure um, the structure itself uh, is built on a concrete pad which is 1080 square feet the riverfront area affected, you, again, you can see that dashed blue line represents the outer riparian and where it ends, comes back this way. Um, the portion of the project that's within the outer riparian is 3,915 square feet. And then the area within the coastal land subject to storm flowage um, is 6,330 square feet. As um, part of the response to the uh, enforcement order, um, there is now a silt fence around the project protecting the isolated vegetated wetlands. And part of a previously submitted restoration plan includes the planting of shrubs in various areas between the pea gravel driveway. And uh, as part of this, we have also placed additional shrubs at the 25 foot no build line represented by the dashed red line on the plan. Um, the building itself, a tiny corner of the building is within the 25 foot no build, but as you can see from this plan, it is a very minimal area. And the building itself and the shrubs uh, within the property will block future access to the buffer around the isolated vegetated wetlands that 25 foot in the world. Um, so where this uh, building has been there since at least 1945, the property has been occupied for a long period of time. It has been disturbed for a long period of time, uh, you know, pre-existing driveways, lawn, what have you. So we feel um, approving this project, especially where it's partially completed regardless. It will have a minimum impact on the isolated vegetated wetland. And again, being on that very outer rim of the 
riverfront area, again, we feel that the impacts to the riverfront area are minimal. So we are seeking approval, retroactive approval for the construction. Lisa, you've been there. Uh, yes, they have, they've done the things I requested and um, the mitigation looks good to me. So um, I would just suggest, you know, that some monitoring of those plants be done. So for two years, um, so, you know, that's full growing seasons. And if you could just, you know, have a simple report sent off to me after you do a simple quick site visit, hey, these are still there, they look good. You know, it shouldn't be a huge bill to the client or anything. Um, unless they want to take it on themselves and take their own picture and send it to me to say these are survived, have survived, right? So, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Jack, any questions? No, I've seen them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyone in the in attendance have questions? Okay, we're looking for a motion to accept the project and issue an order of conditions. I make a motion uh, we accept it and order, uh, approve the order of conditions. That's Second uh, that. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, next we have a continued hearing on a notice of intent. It was requested by Pure Oasis Grow LLC. Um, and this is for work to be done at 620 Spring Street. Uh, do we not have an, an order, I mean a file number, Lisa? Um, 620 Spring, you do, you have a file number. I would have to dig through my email a little right, bit. I'll find it. Thank you, Lisa, for being helpful. Um, my mom taught me good manners. Thanks, Mom. All right, let me look up that file number for you. Okay, thank you. Yep. It's going to be probably 4-4 four, four or 4-5 four, something. Here's the uh, proof of payment. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Now, okay, uh, is the is all that property purchased by Pure Oasis, or is that just a rental? Or uh, they purchased the entire site, but as far as I know, they're still keeping tenants at the other parts of the building. Okay, Lisa, that's what we had talked about. It is. Okay. Yeah. Zero four five four. Five four. Okay. Okay, so. Yeah, um, all right, so, sorry, I was yeah. doing something else. What did you ask? If Oasis purchased the property or if they were working oh. with, under someone else. Yeah. Uh, with, you know, okay. Mm -hmm. You're on. All right, so. I'm Sean Barry from Level Design Group in Plainville, and I'm here to represent Pure Oasis for a redevelopment and repaving project of a historic mill complex at 620 Spring Street. So 
So I have made some revisions to the plan since last time. Um, last time we hadn't updated the test pit information, so the rain gardens were pretty conservatively designed. There's three rain gardens, one at the entrance of Warner Boulevard and two in the back of the proposed repaving parking area. Um, I looked at the infiltration rates. It didn't change a whole lot, so to keep it conservatively designed, I left the systems the same size. We're also proposing uh, two CDS stormwater treatment inlet units at the lower parking area. Uh, so to help you guys on those aerials, where the parking areas propose is that what's in, what's in purple in, the, in those aerial photos. Um, I know there were a, a lot of questions about a, a 21E at a, a site visit we had on, on May 3rd and at yesterday's uh, stormwater committee meeting. And I just wanted to say that uh, DP found and designated an AUL area, the rectangular AUL area in this area, it's about 5,500 square feet. And for the purposes of our project, the only thing to really note is that there's no soil disturbing activity below three feet um, without notice or a soil management plan. What we have proposed in the AUL area is currently an existing 1,500 foot paved area that's going to be ripped out and it's going to be replaced with 1,500 square feet of subgrade gravel ready to be paved. And I know there are also questions about um, scoping the uh, drain lines that run from the two existing catch basins into the sluice drain system. Um, that can definitely be arranged and we'll talk with our client about it and um, hopefully it can be made a uh, approval condition. And that, that's essentially my presentation. Did you get the, those changes so that? Uh... So there's some, um, I know Todd wasn't at the stormwater meeting yesterday, mm -hmm. and I spoke with him today, and he gave me his preliminary review okay. list. Um, it's kind of common courtesy of us to allow stormwater to, you know, make request changes from you. Mm -hmm. You make those changes and then we approve it. Because if we approve it now and there are changes, you just have to understand that you have to come back to us. Right. Yeah, we, d we definitely understand that. Okay. So are you going to request a continuance at this point or are you asking us to close the public hearing? Um, I'm, I'm asking to close the public hearing. The, the AUL area shouldn't have any changes that war warrant the project design, as well as scoping. Um, scoping, there may be interior changes, but because we're mitigating the runoff, there shouldn't be anything substantial. So, um, so the groundwater... Mm -hmm. Separation of the water table must be provided for the rain gardens. Mm -hmm. You understand that, right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, we, we do provide the minimum in, in the three areas. And then um, the land use of higher potential pollutant load. Mm -hmm. That was a big one, Todd said. How many, you know, car how many vehicle trips are going to be going in and out of there to create this load mm -hmm. do you know I, I don't know off the top of my head i'll be honest yeah all right well um you know it's just we can close the hearing and issue conditions but they need to understand that if they make the changes based on stormwater review and requirements then um they're going to have to come back if the plan changes. 
Okay. Would, that be, yeah. would that wouldn't be filing of a new one, and that just be looking it for? It depends if the the changes are substantial okay. or not. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, audience, Nancy. Mr. Barry was at the Stormwater Committee meeting yesterday, and the Stormwater Committee, uh, a couple of members, uh, and Ms. Caledonia had done a site visit at 620 Spring on May the 3rd. Uh, what was discussed was the parking area to be redeveloped. We went up to there and walked around that area. Um, he, uh, Mr. Barry stated that the overflow parking area, uh, the blacktop will be removed and gravel, in, and gravel installed. Only the first parking space in each row will be paved. Uh, it was noted that they will be increasing the impervious surface. Excuse me, they will not be increasing the impervious area, they will be decreasing it. The old landscape areas were inquired about. Mr. Barry explained there will be no tree clearing, only the brush will be removed. Uh, the members inquired about the rain garden areas that abut the river and erosion controls were discussed. The rain garden located near Joseph Warner Boulevard will treat the stormwater in that area. Conservation agent Lisa Caldonia asked if a 21E study was done on this property. It has been done and we've requested a copy of it. So uh, we're waiting on that. Uh, I think there was a small area of contamination yes. found that you mentioned, okay. Uh, stormwater committee members also acquired about where the drain pipe went and where the gas line was located. Mr. Barry was not sure about the, the uh, at the time, the 21E study, but we now know it was done. The location of the gas pipe or where the drain pipe went. Um, so we had a public hearing yesterday and they have that information. I said, we're waiting for uh, the 21E, we're waiting for uh, identification of where the um, gas line is, natural gas is what I'm talking about, and where the drain pipe went. In this parking lot, there are uh, basins with like graded covers. But in one section, the water flows underground and goes into the mill and goes through a sluiceway, which old mills had this. Uh, Mr. Aguiar said that those basins and the pipes have to be visually uh, scoped with a camera, and also the sluice has got to be inspected. So there's a number of things that the Stormwater Committee is waiting for that have to be done. Whether or not any changes are gonna be made to any of the drainage or anything else at this time, we don't know. So I just want you to be aware of there are uh, some things we're waiting on before we can uh, discuss this again at our next meeting. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. When is that meeting? The 15th. Uh, the 15th of June is the regular one because we're always the day before you, it seems. Uh, we discussed resurfacing the lower parking area and also the two catch basins that flow into and through the building, which is what I'm describing. You can see the sluice. Uh, the first time I went there with uh, Mr. Pilling, you could see water flowing. When we were up there on the third, uh, there wasn't water flowing. As we hadn't had enough rain to uh, raise the level of the uh, catch basin so that it would go in and go through the building. Um, the basins will need to be improved to separate the contaminants from stormwater as it continues to the river. It was noted the sluiceway will, sluice way will also need to be inspected. Um, Mr. Barry stated he would submit a revised plan uh, set as the original plans were hard to read. So he, he did come to our meeting yesterday and as I said, uh, we still have some open issues and we need more information. So, uh, and the other thing was, um, we said we wanted to know what the CONCOM was going to do. Uh, if you were taking any action, uh, Obviously, we're waiting to see what you're gonna do, but now you know what we're waiting for. Thank you. Yeah, overall, I think this, you know, this is an imp gonna be an improvement of the site if the drainage and everything can get, um, is designed properly, so. So uh, the only thing I wanted to note, um, the 21E, uh, it's essentially a paper chase document um, to see if any further investigation needs to be done by DEP. And I have the AUL for you guys. Great. Thank you. Okay, thank 
So as I've said, um, for our purposes, the only thing that's really worth noting in the AUL is on page two. Um, there's no disturbing, no soil disturbing activities below three feet without notice and a soil management plan. Uh, we're only going to be disturbing a 1,500 square foot triangular piece. There's already existing pavement there. We're going to remove that pavement and replace it with gravel subgrade. That's the only part of the AUL area that we're going to be entering, and we're not going to be below three feet from grade. So. Okay, so this is new information that I haven't seen before tonight. So I typically, you know, require something like this to be submitted a couple of weeks before the meeting. Um, still looking for a closing of the hearing tonight rather than waiting till all this is uh, through the next meeting for stormwater and the rest? I mean, there's a good chance that if you can get everything in line for this next stormwater meeting, I believe that the commission would be satisfied at that point to close the hearing in the June meeting. Okay. But if you, if you push in for tonight, we can do that. It's just then you'd have to reopen, you know, resubmit and everything. Right. And that's going to take We know how uh, much fun that months. is. Yeah. It, it, so, so you, but you, you're still going to be held up by stormwater yeah. until the 15th of June. Correct. This, this is one day later. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah, that's fine. But yeah. The only, the only real revision I need to make is, is the gas line. Um, nothing, nothing with the design is going to change. I mean, so. All right, Sean, we'll, we'll, um... Do we have something for him to request a continuance to June 16th? Oh, I have to give you one. Um, Is there anyone in the audience that has any questions? When you submit to Stormwater, please make sure you submit, you know, obviously submit uh, to us the yeah. copies. <clears throat> Sean, the continuance okay. form. Uh, motion to Thank continue you. to June 16th. Yeah, I'll make a motion. We continue uh, Pure Oasis till uh, June 16th. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed. Great for diabetics. <laughs> Certainly, by the, certainly on the 16th, we'll, uh, Sean, no. we'll uh, get that. Are you trying to get rid of me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I appreciate that. I'm all set. Thank you. No, we're looking at your interest, too, in time. Yeah. You know, because if there's a problem, then. <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. We appreciate it. Okay, we have uh, uh, an invoice. Two invoices. Uh, um, dated 5-4 for $498.75 for services rendered uh, by Ecosystem Solutions. Uh, these will be paid by a 53G account set up for Hunters Hill. Is there a motion made to uh, pay that bill? I make a motion that we pay uh, Eco Solutions. Amount of $498.75. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Passed. Okay, we have uh, another invoice in the amount of $400 from Beta Group for services rendered 
uh, in the review of Forest Hill Estates on Forest Street. This is being paid for out of a 53G account uh, set up for Forest Hill Estates. Is there a motion to pay? I make a motion that we pay uh, some of $400 to Beta Group for services rendered. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed. Okay, uh, I would like to take the next item out of uh, order, and uh, uh, and what I would like to take out of order is a request to access Broad Cove. It's under correspondence to perform turtle uh, search. Uh, and uh, is there a motion to take this one out of order? I'll make a motion to take this out of order and uh, hear the... Uh, uh, turtle. Okay. Uh, is there I'll, a? I'll is, second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Jennifer O'Keefe. She's from the TRWA. We heard you were a teacher and you had to go to bed early to have school tomorrow. Oh, thank you. Um, I do have one concern though. Is this being videotaped? Uh, audio recording. Because we're going to be talking about locations where they might nest. You don't have to say it on there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so if you don't mind going up to the podium so I can get your audio. Yep. Like, yep. Come on up. All right. Um, my name is Jennifer O'Keefe. I'm a volunteer with the Taunton River Watershed Alliance. And um, Eleanor Simmons is also a volunteer. Um, and oh. she actually has our educational animal uh -huh. with us um, because we thought you might like a visit. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. I'm going to take a picture. <laughs> um, she, um, so this is, these are the areas where we've actually seen diamondbacks in mm -hmm. Dayton. Oh, right. um, and this is the area. Where well, we got something for them. <laughs> <laughs> and she, she likes mealworms and, you know, insects. I don't know if she'd go for fine chocolates. So, um, she, she came from the Cape. Um, somebody had um, picked her up off the beach. At full grown? Uh, not much yeah. of a turtle. Oh, she'd get too good if you could. Yeah. I'm so. gonna see the, I'm gonna see the back of it. Okay, all right. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, she gets the, the hand sanitizer too. Greenish blue. But she, she was, um, she was a wild turtle, um, that somebody decided to keep as a pet, um, and they didn't Beautiful. take good care of her, and she got a respiratory infection, um, and, uh, she can't be released to the wild now because she'll infect all the other turtles. So she's she's an educational animal now. So she is our friend. So on the move. Yeah, she'll she'll go right over the edge. <laughs> no, we're just um, we're looking for permission. Um, Living to, on the edge, huh? Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yes, definitely. Two 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 years ago, um, before COVID, um, we had gotten permission from the CONCOM to access yes. um, the the railroad easement. Um, and um, watch for nesting females and try to attempt to put some screens down. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we didn't have enough volunteers to do it in the last two years, but it looks like this year we're going to have enough. So Weren't they nesting on someone's lawn? Oh, they, they, they nest all over the place. They nest in people's gardens, they in sandboxes. Um, I, I've witnessed a few, you know, observed a few areas. Um, that I've kind of, I want to keep an eye on. Um, two years ago, um, I was watching them swim alongside. Yeah. And, you know, I, they were going to make landfall, um, but then they saw me <laughs> where I was. And uh, she was actually hissing at me. She was very mad with me. Um, but she didn't lay because wherever I was, she could see me. Um, and then I came back another day, um, and I was on the street with the, with the yep. field glasses, um, and one laid, and by the time I walked over, um, you know, I met Mr. Fox coming back, um, so they, they have a den right there in the middle, middle, middle of the causeway, so. Um, so we're gonna try it with two people now, but um, I just wanted to make sure we could get permission to try this again and uh, see what happens. I don't see any problem, and uh, certainly uh, you guys don't either. Uh, 
to, you know, yeah. this is what it is. I mean, we, uh, we have even purchased a lot of land uh, around Broad Cove to uh, let wildlife survive and, and certainly for you people to educate the general public yeah. on this. Yeah. Yeah, so this is, um, this is, this is a, a flat, this is a self-releasing screen that we're using um, over in a sonnet. Um, we may actually change it to um, a rounder screen um, that kind of sits above. Um, that's a really bad picture. Um, so we'll, we'll see, see what happens um, if we actually even manage to catch one nesting. Um, you the cover the egg site with that? Yeah, yeah. Is that egg site? That is, that is, that Uncovered? Is. They don't cover their eggs? Um, that, that one's predated. Oh, okay. So, um, but that, that's right along the bridge about the uh, you, can, you can see the test holes, and then you can see where the fox is coming. So, um, and it, it looks like there's about five or seven that are laying right there at the bridge. Yeah. Um, and they may lay, lay one or two nests, but... Um, How many eggs in a nest? Um, <laughs> That's a good answer. 15, 15, yes. 11 to 15. 15. Yes. What's the survival rate? Well, it depends on the area. Yeah. Um, Where usually it's, it's been like 98% yeah. the place. Okay, now, so houses. now after laying their eggs, do they uh, uh, migrate elsewhere? Mortality. Oh, mortality. Yeah, 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 that's not good. Okay. Yeah, um, so when, when they lay their eggs, um, it depends. Um, sometimes, so there's, there's, a, there's a, a beach in the Sona that we're working with. Uh, they're in the water, the turtles, primarily? Uh, the, primarily, they're in the water. Um, and we've caught turtles in um, Berkeley that we've observed in Dighton, and we've caught turtles in Dighton that we've uh, all the way down in the summit. So they, they do travel. The females seem to travel the most. The males tend to stay in their own little neighborhood. Um, matter of fact, they know certain little points along the river where I'm always observing the same male. That's, that's his spot. How did you say, do you mark them? Uh, we pit tag them, yes. So, um, How far north do they travel? Um, we have seen them as far north. Um, we've seen them sunning on the um, the railroad abutment at the Segi. Segi. Yeah, Segi. Where? The Segi. Right here. The Segi. Okay. All right. That, that is the northernmost that we've seen. Oh, okay. Um, we've seen. Um, matter of fact, I made comments on the um, the uh, okay. the bike path. Um, we've seen um, depredated nests. Oh, I bet. All along there, I, I don't. There's a there's a, a little vernal pool, so I don't know if they are diamondbacks or if they're, you know, they could be, you know, spotties from the, uh, the vernal pool. Um, they they also caught a blandings turtle not that far from there too. So I mean, you know, that area right there. When when the when they pave the um, the railroad easement, you get to watch, make sure that they put some other sandy areas around it because. Um, I've, I've caught turtles crossing Pleasant Street, you know, yeah. in the middle of nowhere. So no. what, what is the, what is the um, status? Is it endangered? Threatened. Okay. Threatened. Now, is Brian Basterak our work? Yeah. Okay. We've, we've, we've tagged 299 turtles. Um, this is going to be wow. our seventh year of research. Um, and so yeah. So. Brian's our boss. Yes. <laughs> so we, we have to swear to uphold the Okay. Truth yeah, yeah. So um, we, we tend to work I the shore. He works the, the boat. Or... So, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so I, are we all set? I mean, you're all set. Uh, I don't think we need a motion to. Uh... Oh, yeah, I just, I double checked that because, um, you know, it's good to know. Are they going to be putting any um, temporary bridges? Across, not, nothing. No, they're no, going to go just, during low tide. Yeah. The, the disturbance, they're going to take in what they take and back, what they take in. And you have you have some kind of visual identification if the if people see you. Um, I can I can get some. Yes. Yeah, I mean that that I, might just satisfy the interest I, of. I, I have to. I always have to have the permit with me. 
um, because okay. it's, it would be illegal for me to touch them without okay. a permit. So that's usually my identification. Well, so. well you're all set with us, and uh, we uh, yeah. enjoy seeing uh, wildlife. Maybe, uh, maybe maybe we'll have some good news. So maybe we'll get some nests protected. And we can okay. Show them. I thank you. I thank you thank so much. Thank you. Let us know. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Point of order, you should vote permission for them to go there. It should be on record. Thank yes. you. Okay, then uh, let's go. Well, it doesn't hurt to make a motion, though. I'll make a motion that we allow uh, Jennifer O'Keefe to tend to her turtles. And, and, <laughs> mem and other members. TRWA. I'll second that. TRWA. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I thank you very much. So. Thank you. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come visit again. Good luck. Hopefully, lots of good news. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, we have uh, update commission update. Um, Zero Horton Street. Okay. Uh, Lisa. Here I go. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, as you recall, they were at our April meeting. Oh, yeah, April meeting um, to present. Um, mitigation plan for the disturbances out there um, and Jim and I spoke about going and visiting the site thank you um, so you know since that meeting honestly Jim and I have been too busy he's been planting his garden I've been chasing other violations and permits around so we haven't set up the site visit but we need to um, but the good news is got a consultant Consulting did follow up to see if I've been out there and what I my comments are and I told them I have not been out there but to follow up with me in two weeks because I should be able to get out there in the next couple weeks. Okay. Hart Street. Um, Hart Street, ironically, I reached out to Paul Duart. Well actually I reached out to Proline Engineering and I asked him where the letter was because I, as you recall we have the as built. So we're waiting for a letter and the form, the certificate of compliance form, request form. Um, and Paul Duart um, got right back to me and said he hasn't been able to get a hold of the engineer. He's been trying. The guy's probably really busy. But he sent me the form today. So now we're just waiting for one more piece, which is the letter. Okay. So we're making progress. Fifteen sixty six Cedar Street. Cedar Street. Um, all right. So as you recall, one wetland scientist was fired, and North Country um, Consulting was hired. Um, the gentleman from North Country, who um, John D'Souza, is the consultant for Mr. Uh, Matthew Moitoso um, of fifteen sixty six Cedar. Um, basically, I followed up with them and they responded tonight um, that he is still in Minneapolis. Let me just read the email one second. Is any, has any restoration begun? Well, no, we have to approve that, remember? Okay. Um, so, um, sorry for the late response. I'm in Minnesota, sorry, still with the military and I'm expecting to be back next week. I will file the reports with you next Friday. So I responded and said town halls closed on Friday. And by the way, the next Monday is Memorial Day. So I look forward to seeing it on Tuesday and thank you for your services. Um, so that's, that's where that one's at. Okay, so we still Slow need a plan. Slow progress. County Street? Um, yes, 2371 County Street. We had a site visit on um, April 27th with DEP uh, and the Stormwater Committee. And um, since the site visit, I followed up with DEP to see where we are at. Um, they have said they would like to speak with the attorney to see if the um, violator um, would like to um, cooperate, is plans to cooperate. What, uh, what's their intent? And um, at this point, um, I played a little phone tag with the lawyer, Mr. Mitchell, and Mr. Mitchell did tell me um, that he has advised his client to um, 
you know, do what needs to be done out there um, and follow the guidance of DEP, but he's not um, confident that his client is going to listen. Um, so DEP, I'm having a phone call with DEP tomorrow about this, and I will update you guys as soon as I, I do that. Um, next. Okay, um, William Street. Okay. Yeah, we, we made a little progress with this one as well. Um, as you recall, last meeting, or no, the April meeting, Charlie asked me to make a, to reach out to Outback, so I reached out to Outback and to Mr. Martin, and Mr. Martin responded right away, I will get a check out to Outback at the beginning of next week so they can get going. I honestly forgot I've been super busy with work. He owns his own uh, tow truck, tow truck business, um, East Coast. Um, so in any case, so this gentleman um, tells me he's going to start the process with Outback. Now I should follow up with Outback to make sure. Um, County Street to 2040, yep. different from the other County Street. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I received, as you recall, may recall, um, I was told the site was flagged, and I said, hey, it's really early in the season to be flagging this wetland. Why don't you revisit it once things start flowering? Um, so, you know, mid-spring, mid mid, mid to the end of spring. So I received an email this past Monday from the consultant, who is Mark. Rodericks, um, and he said he would like to propose that his wetland scientist Jim Walsh reestablish the flagging of the VVW limit at the old sawmill on Wednesday morning, May 25th, and then we could meet on site later that morning before they're surveyed um, to make sure they're all set with you. So that's where that it. So that's next week. I'm going to meet him on site to review that wetland line, and then they'll get everything on a plan. Um, they may get their project on the plan as well, because as you recall, they're renting it to a trucking company, and that trucking company wanted to make some changes to the site. Okay. So that's that's upcoming. Okay, Wellington Street, 1763. Yep, she's hired a consultant since our last meeting. Um, she's hired Stephen Schmiel to flag the wetland, and he is contacting surveyors to document the property. She's waiting for a price from the surveyor. Um, <clears throat> she'll keep us posted, and that was received on May 11th. So... Um, as soon as it's flagged, I'm sure Stephen Schmiel will let me know, and then okay. I can probably just go take a look before they survey it and see if I have any discrepancies. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. 841 Brook Street. Okay, so um, I left the homeowner a voice message that I'd like to conduct a site visit with the building official. Um, I left her uh, message that was on May 11th. I haven't received a call back. Um, she has not filed for a building permit for the fence that she was proposing. So once she does that, I will get notice of that also. So we might may be waiting on that one. Okay, um, okay. Horton Street, 2050. Yep. So um, there was multiple emails that went back and forth between Mr. Bremer and DEP, um, but I spoke with Mr. Bremer yesterday, and he um, agreed that I, I, instead of him coming to the meeting, he would like me to just read this one email that he had sent saying what he plans to do for um, mitigation strategy for his property. Um, this was an email to me, myself, uh, sorry, myself and Daniel, um, 
Charlie Mallow was CC'd. Number one, um, you agree I can spread the loom in my backyard. Um, and I'm assuring you the lawn is over 200 feet from the river. Number two, can I cut up to 10 cords of wood in the wetlands based on the 10 cord or less in the Wetlands Protection Act? Also based on the photos I'm confirming I have been using based on the Forestry Act. Number three, I can continue using my outdoor wood stove and put stacks of wood around it. Number four, as long as I'm willing to work with the conservation to document the bridge, you are willing to let me replace the top five rotted borders, boards for safety. And this is based on the document that Lisa thinks I should file. Lisa told me the name of the document, I just can't remember it. Well, it's a notice of intent. Um, number five, I need to use existing site plan and document on it where the bridge is, also the carport using measurements from the existing structures on the plan. Number six, document the amount of the stream that was altered 14 years ago by approximate measurements, depths of width and alteration because it was 14 years ago, best guess. Um, number seven, give full dimensions of the existing bridge width and length and height from the 100 year mark. And this will be approximate. Number eight, set a 25 foot buffer in the field off the pond. I do not, if before I do any planting, have it approved by the Conservation Commission. Number nine, after all this is complete, uh, now I'm gonna finish going back to living in peace. Uh, <laughs> that was his last one. Um, but number eight, okay. So discussion with him yesterday, he said, I think I'm just gonna leave the field alone. I don't think I'm gonna try to plant it anymore. I'm getting too old to do that. So then, you know, he said, Daniel, let me know if I misunderstood you in any way. Please conform, confirm or deny that this is my understanding. Thanks, Robert Brimmer. So he's making headway okay. to compliance. Oak Street. All right. Oak Street, I do need to follow up with that one. So I should have an update for the June meeting. Okay. Uh, Somerset Avenue. Um, one second. Okay, so I sent a letter out to 1847 Somerset Ave. Um, 1861, isn't it? But the, yeah, but it should have been to 1861. Um, I did it based on the mailbox. The, I picked up the wrong mailbox when I looked at the, looked at the house and the disturbances. I didn't go on the property. Um, but the, the person that received the letter um, at 1847, gave it to the neighbor. The neighbor is the one doing the disturbance. Um, and they left me a voicemail about an hour before the meeting. I have not called them back yet, but I will. Okay. Um, but they called within the time frame. I asked them to call before the 21st to let, let us know their intent to mm -hmm. um, cooperate. And what is the violation? Um, so there's clearing and I, it's, Looks like they're doing landscaping, maybe a driveway um, in the BBW, and it may be in the riverfront. Um, uh, okay, I don't know what number. What number are you at Town Hall? Um, 979. Okay, so that's... It's uh, 1861. That's, it's on the corner of Old Somerset. No, I... I, I, I when the hill goes down and... Yeah. yeah. Next and to the so old police station. How I observed this was I was walking the rail line with um, a PA group. They flagged it for the DCR trail that's going to be proposed there. And we looked over at the flag. I was reviewing the flagging and I looked over and I said, oh boy, I wish okay. I didn't. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Now we have clear water. Yeah. Clear way. Clear way. Solar. Well, I hope they got clear water too. Uh, <laughs> uh, DEP file number 01703969. Um, you have one, Jack? 1420 yeah, and 1522 William Street violation. Um, so we have um, representatives here to discuss this. We have the field crew and Wetland scientists. Um. Before you start. Okay.
you heard from Bill? Charlie, have you heard from Bill? Any word from Bill? No. Oh. <coughs> no, Jim. No, Jim. No. Well, I'll read this. Um, TRWA left this Taunton River Festival Sunday, June 12th from 11 to 4 at Weir River Riverfront Park in Taunton, free admission. They'll have food, crafts, educational ex exhibits, vendors, free book, riverboat tours, and more. Music and dance, uh, Rose Wharf Band, Ragtime, Jack Radcliffe, the Unlikely Strummers, and Silver City Dance Center. Food trucks, our ox cart, and Frosty Friends ice cream. Again, that's Sunday, June 12th, 11 to 4. What's that? Of course. Yes. Okay. Good, Good evening. evening. My name is Jason Ringler. I'm with TRC Companies. We're here on behalf of the Clearway Solar Project in Dighton on William Street. Yeah, with me this evening, I have representatives uh, the, from the owner, Clearway Energy. I have the engineer of record, Meridian Associates, and the site contractor, Signal Energy, as well. So I think uh, the reason why we're here was there was a, a a violation work was completed outside of the approved limit of disturbance and as a result of that there was an email that was sent to uh, clearway and as a result there was a request for a wetland restoration plan i'm a um, as um, a representative from trc i'm a professional wetland scientist and a certified wildlife biologist so i went out i visited the site last thursday and took a look at the area to try to help develop this restoration plan uh, one of the uh, questions and concerns from the site visit was whether or not the erosion controls and uh, limit of disturbance were established correctly and as a result of that, uh, Meridian Associates went back out into the field last Tuesday with total station survey, and they verified the location of not only the limit of disturbance, but they also located the erosion control measures that were established in the field. So as part of the restoration plan that was included and submitted this past Monday on the 16th, this is... Uh, you could consider it more of an as-built, as or it, it's currently reflecting existing conditions. So the red line represents the approved limit of disturbance. The lines down here represent the existing erosion control measures, and the areas in green represent the areas of work that extended beyond the limit of disturbance. What we tried to do is uh, separate two areas of concern, the first being area one, uh, proximal to the vernal pool, immediately adjacent to the access road, and the second being up here uh, a little bit further to the north once you access the site. So one of the cons uh, items for restoration war was considering, uh, as, as it's laid out, we're gonna propose to hydro seed the, the, uh, both areas and to provide more of a buffer uh, for this wetland, there's uh, shrub plantings in the form of high bush blue, blueberry, I'm sorry, high bush cranberry and uh, winged sumac, uh -huh. I believe. Uh -huh. The uh, fill that had been pushed into the urinal pool, uh, is that going to be removed? So right now, if I'm, I'm not sure if you had an opportunity to go to the site, there's, I, I would estimate there's probably a foot or more of water. And if you look at the slope, the slope's unstable. So what we're proposing, and a point of clarification, 
upon approval of this restoration plan, the work would, uh, the restoration of this area, the seeding and the replanting will take place immediately. What we're proposing, because of the standing water that's in the vernal pool and the inability to see what went in once the vernal pool level, water levels drop down like they typically do in the fall, at that point we would go in, identify any of that material that's gone into the vernal pool, and then remove it with you know, buckets and shovels if necessary, if it's discernible. I just want to back up. Um, like two months ago, Todd and I conducted a site visit and we did some measurements and we said these erosion controls, this, this stake of this limit of work where the erosion controls are going to go, it's, it's not right. There's, the area is um, supposed to be wider. We have a 25 foot no touch. So we asked why there were discrepancies and we were told they were going to look into it. Well, apparently the gentleman that we asked no longer works for Clearway. So that message never got to anyone. And then the site started getting cleared and the contractor went in and apparently it was a different contractor than who they normally would use to put the erosion controls in. They cleared extensive areas on either side. Um, so the plans that were submitted to you guys, which are right here, that were approved, bottom line is, even though we have spent months going over them with them, the contractor said this could not, cannot work. I don't, I don't understand how the contractor can say it can't work, but that's what you guys said, or Clearway said, would work. So what happened? I, I think I think a, a point of clarification, and, and maybe uh, Meridian can and talk to this. What was approved has been staked in the field by survey. No, it wasn't accurate, and we told you guys it wasn't accurate uh, two I'm, months before this happened. We told you in an email it wasn't accurate, and we needed clarification as to why it wasn't accurate. We measured. We literally measured from the wetland flags to the stakes, and the stakes were not at our 25 foot, especially in area two. Okay, so all I can attest to is the fact that what was laid out and what's shown in the field was done pursuant to the Massachusetts Professional Land Survey of Standards. No, it wasn't. There's no way. Okay. Because what is on the plan, okay, in area two, shows 25 feet. The, uh, as far as area two is concerned, when our crew went out there last week, my crew chief did call me, and there was one flag that appeared to be closer. At least two. Uh, well, let me just back up. The initial uh, wetland delineation, we did, we did not connect. We were... When we received the plans and we were asked to rehang the flags a while back, yeah. we just went, we go by the approved locations that were previously approved. When we create points from based on that, and then we survey out those points and rehang the flags. So we Maybe did that's when it happened. Something happened and Maybe. it was wrong. Know, but, and we, uh, we asked for clarification and we never got it. In fact, I had your extended order sitting on my desk for Dan Cowan from over a month. Oh, Dave Cowan, yeah. Dave Cowan. Yeah, he's the gentleman that's no longer with uh, Right, with Clearway. and so I ended up giving it to the general contractor. I forget his name. Uh, Lewis. Lewis. Yeah, Well, so that's sort of what prompted, if you look on area two, when my survey chief measured it in the field and he said, this is not 25 feet, that's when the decision was made to pull two of the stakes back and lay in uh, the new location for the erosion control. Right, but so, but the but the clearing was done beyond the limit of disturbance before before. As far as the points, um, when they got back from the field, we download their points and compare it with what was generated. They laid out the the correct points. The points are, uh, the survey points initially were generated based off the approved lines of the erosion control. So we have to take what was approved and then we we place points along that line that they then go stake out in the field. 
to ensure that we're staking out what was the okay. actual approved line. So, I mean, it, there's a couple of the issues. Front. There's that issue, but then there was the issue that the contractor on site told us that when he installs these big models, he needs to clear so we have all this temporary disturbance on either side. Right. You know? I, I, I wasn't, you know, I'm no. not there when they're installing no. it. I can tell you that usually on sites like this, when you have your rose control line, it's common to have the limit of disturbance be a few feet beyond that because right. when you do install these, you need to somehow get, sometimes get on the other side. Of course. Also, it leaves a little bit of slack so that if, if you're laying out a straight line of several hundred feet of erosion control, you may run into an a obstacle rock. or a rock that you have to go around. So you have to allow yourself a little bit of room to go around the right, other side. But like, why wasn't this all figured out in the permitting process? As far as what? Where the actual... That you needed so many additional feet. So now... Well, I think it was. It was on the approved plans. Mm. The offset, if you look, there's an offset, there's a bit of an offset between the limit of work or the limit of disturbance and the erosion controls that go around, goes around the main body of the array. Uh, also, I just want to point out that in the area of the crossing, we never staked out the limit of disturbance line. We only staked out the erosion control because the understanding was the erosion control was. effectively was the limit of disturbance. Yeah. So that's what, what we staked out. And so what... I don't, you know, as far, <laughs> as far as a machine operator pushing stuff one way or the other, I, I, I couldn't tell you. But um, as far as how the survey was done, that's... And then that's, I do have another question. Is the DEP file number even up out there? The sign, it, it's, it's, in, it's being made. The sign's being made. Yeah, we actually had a conversation about it's, it's that not, uh, either yesterday or right today. Now, but it's being made. I don't understand. It, it's, it, these are simple things, and this is a huge project. I don't understand. I mean, we have little projects where they can go so smooth, but then we have these big projects where you have so many different people involved, and it doesn't seem like anyone can, can communicate. It just seems crazy to me. And as far as approving a restoration plan tonight, I don't think anyone should approve it because Todd and I still need to go out there and field check that plan that just came in on Monday. That, that's fine. But, you know, they don't even have plans on site like they're supposed to. Right. I, I don't know Did where, they, where they're going to set up a trailer. or uh, I think we were told it's going to be somewhere uh, up there, but there's no trailer. And every it's single going to be a box. every single foreman of each area, whether it's wetland, tree cutting, or whatever it is, has to have a plan. And Everybody they don't even have a, they don't even have a, um, a car, a house to put it in, right. uh, a trailer or whatever, they're going to they're gonna use a trailer, I'm sure. We typically bring our, our trailer um, after the clearing's done. We, we've so, so how are the people that do the clearing, how are they going to see? They the, have their own set of hard copies in their, in their, um, their base and in their, their trucks. So you're talking a limited number of people on site. So they all have hard copies. Everybody, it's available to everybody on a platform called Procore, and everybody has access to it, and we have hard copies. That should all be established before anybody starts a chainsaw or anybody goes out with a ditch witch or anybody does any of that. Yeah, understood. I spent over 30 years doing that. And as far as like, we need room for this or we need room for that, if it isn't in line with the limit, you don't belong over there. You're from that limit in. Correct. Okay, well, I haven't seen the site, but aren't they off by quite a bit? 10 feet, is Disturbance. it? 10 feet. Well, how many square feet of disturbance are we talking well, about? Well, no, I mean, just off some of the lines, Lisa. Six, seven feet, four, five feet over the limit. Oh, it, into, it's into more, the wetland. More than, uh, more than in, that. Into, in, into in the, the vernal pool. Well, they're in the wetland, and then they're in the in the 25-foot no touch. Yeah, well, they're not supposed to be. 25 refer, feet, 25 the, feet. Are you referring to the location of the erosion control or the, the disturbance that, beyond, that you're talking the about? The disturbance. Okay. And I think that's why 
the, the commission asked for a restoration plan. Of course. That's, yeah. that's what we're here trying uh, to <clears throat> prepare. So. But we're just trying to get to the bottom of how this even happened. I just, I still don't understand. Okay. Um, I know you're not, <laughs> you're the wetland scientist. I get it. You know, you're here to fix it. But I still don't understand so that when we have another solar project, this doesn't happen. It happened with another solar project too, you know? Um, uh, so at the Vernal Pool, mm. they have a 20 foot limit of disturbance. So if they're, going, if they're going to need sloping because of the pool, they might have a 15 foot roadway. They're, they're allowed, that's, that's, they were allowed by the fire chief to, walk, to narrow that area and because it was a sensitive I, area. I believe when we measured it off, it was 30 feet. Am I correct when we measured it? Yeah, we The measured. area of, dis, of, of angle, the whole works. Um, which is, and when you start filling in a vernal pool, uh, we take that very serious. Um, okay, the plan that you have. They're, um, they're going to do bi-weekly monitoring of the project, which is great. That's a great <clears throat> step in the right direction that he, he someone from TRC will be out there to re to make sure those areas um, aren't disturbed anymore and that the plantings are thriving. And so the, those the large controls are good. Controls. Uh, uh, waddles. Waddles. They have to either be pulled in or pulled out and something else substituted uh, so that, um, I don't know, th th we heard that, oh, you can't, uh, they're so big you can't use them in that in a narrow area. And then they shouldn't have been used because the plan says 20 feet. I, I, th I think I think it's just I understand what you're saying. The limit of work is the limit of work. The area in red that's I think I'm showing on your plans <clears throat> is what was approved. If you can if you can see the where is that this where the vernal pool was right there. Yes, sir. Right here. Okay. Oh, right here, vertical pool. It's, it's okay. labeled, centrally located. Interior of that are the erosion control measures. Then okay, so if, then why did they fill in part of the vertical pool? Well, that's that's what, okay. and, and that's why we're here. I, I'm not right. That's why we're here. So, we proposed so, a restoration plan, and we plan. were told by someone, "Oh, those waddles are so big, we 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 can't maneuver, manipulate them, and we had to do it." No, you follow the plan, and again, I'm not sounding off at you because I know you're trying to fix things. So, but if I get loud, just excuse me. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but uh, 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 so those waddles or the uh, control barriers may have to be 15 feet if you need a slide because the limit of work comes at the base of that of, of that uh, angle. There. This is what was approved. This is what's currently there. <clears throat> this actually, is big. Actually, there's a diff a, an additional area on there, that existing soil stockpile. That was never even on our approved plan. So that's an additional survey. Uh, and I also want to bring to your attention that. But that soil stockpile was something that was was. Right. So, but was it was never there. picked up in the original survey. That's all I'm saying. Right. Right. But it's nothing that's new or been placed. I understand. There. Okay. But it's <laughs> should have been picked up in the original survey. That makes me wonder if this survey was really done by ground truthing or not. So you also have um, common button bush and high bush blueberry proposed for wetland buffer plantings around that vernal pool. Correct. But this is this is mitigation. This is this is a restoration plan yeah. for these green areas. So again we're talking about uh, if, if if I could just try to go over what we're proposing to sure, go ahead to, to demonstrate okay and I again I, I I don't intend to haul off on you it's the installer and the company that permitted that installation so again uh, as a as a I, I can understand and appreciate the value of wetlands as a, as a professional wetland scientist and that's <clears throat> why I'm here I was asked to develop a wetland restoration plan 
these three areas in green represent 235 square feet. It was located via survey. It's accurate. Those areas we're proposing to be hydro seeded. In addition, these areas are going to be replanted with shrub plantings and sapling plantings. After, the, after yesterday's stormwater meeting, I went out to the site and I, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. a, a, an additional erosion control measure in the form of a, uh, a silt sock will be placed at the top of the slope once it's hydro seeded. That way there it will prevent any further material going into the Oh, you hole. didn't think it should be a silt fence should go at the bottom? I, I was concerned about a silt fence because of having to... Uh, uh, Species. And, and ditching it in. Well, and then the other issue is, didn't we have critter crossings? No, yes, there's six of them. Are we gonna be able to do them? Yes, they're gonna be along the, the so they're gonna be kind of a staggered approach. Yeah. So once, once these are established, once we resolve this restoration <laughs> area, those will be in, put in place. So, so that's area one. And again, as the one thing that I, I guess wasn't clear in the letter is that these restorations will take place immediately upon approval. Right. There's a different restoration that's associated with the site stabilization. That will still also take place. The only thing that wouldn't take place right now is going into the open water of the vernal pool to take out any material because it's gonna be counterproductive. There's amphibians in there right now. The other thing that I also noted is that any of the brush or debris that was knocked into the vernal pool, I'm not proposing to take it out because it's gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna provide attachment locations for pond breeding amphibians. So that's area one. Area two is up here, the area that we were talking about. We're put, gonna propose to put a second line of, of uh, silt fence in that area, the area that's uh, the 25 foot no touch and the area in green is going to be hydro seeded okay so in addition there's a third thing that we put out we, we laid out in the letter to demonstrate in a, com a commitment to the restoration we're going to propose to do uh, twice monthly monitoring and it'll be out there we, we un I've, I've gone through the order of conditions I understand the pre-construction conditions. I understand the construction conditions. I understand wetlands. So we can coordinate and we can under, you know, have a, a, an email chain if it's acceptable to the commission mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah, that's, that's and ha have a dialogue to make sure that we're you know, following the, the site visits. You can get an inspection report. So I, I'm not like ready for you guys to approve this restoration, but I think that if you would agree that once Todd and I go back out and take the plans to the site and look at them together, then I can authorize the restoration unless you want to wait till another meeting. Okay, I, I, what I'm thinking is that, uh, well, we gotta get public input first, but, but uh, m my thoughts are that uh, if we give uh, conditional approval through you, and therefore we would have a vote on it, and uh, I mean, the, the plan seems... Yeah, we don't want them planting in July. Or, um, you know. the, the, the plan seems like it's, it's going to work. So if we give uh, conditional approval based upon your... Okay. And then, then you can uh, uh, go ahead um, with your observation. Sounds uh, good. Okay. I like the plantings. I do. Um, the wetland seed mix is, is good for that other area. Um, you know, you'll have a little. And then, and part area. of that is the removal in later. Sorry, in conservation cement. Okay, yeah. I know, Nancy. You're going to be asking. You're going to be raising your hand. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> I see. I think that you know, to to, to your point, sir, uh, regarding the removal of the material in the vernal pool, by being on site twice monthly, you know, we we can maintain a dialogue. And we can we can go out there if you want to go out, you know if you want me to go if out I with can. you. Or, you know, if I, if I can, I will. Have you pulled those barriers in? The barriers are consistent to what was approved. But you still have 
overlay because of the angle. So the barriers are here, but really they should be here and that should be, and the angle should be part of the 20 foot right of way through that area. So what, what is, so, uh, so the barrier should be here and then the angle going up, then across, down, and then the other barrier here. Because the barrier uh, denotes the limitation of work. I think if, you, if we were to do that, we would be going beyond what was authorized. We would, we would be at the toe of the slope in the wetland in, the, in that case. Uh, no, you, you would just have a smaller roadway. I think a just, narrower roadway. I think you suggested putting it at the toe of the slope. We're at the top of the slope. At the base of the slope. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not sure. I know that on the Vernal Pool side, the slope is, uh, you know, if, if that barrier was put there before any work was done, uh, you, nothing would have gotten into the Vernal Pool. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And what you would have gone up, and then it would have gone across, and it would have come down. And I'm not sure how much down on the other, on the opposite side. The problem side is there. those waddles, it's not feasible on a, on a, in that location like that. It's not like it's a silt fence. Well, it's a but it, 18 it, it inch, how many pounds? Probably should have been a silt fence. Yeah, well, maybe um, you can speak to that. Yeah, they're 18 inch waddles or silt tops, we, we call them. Um, and there's 50 feet on a pallet and they're- oh, I, But that's why using that as the barrier in that location is not- uh, they, they split it though, Jim. When you take a circle, she says it's 18 in. You split that, you put the wall, you stake it, and you're talking like nine inches. Correct? I, I don't understand what you're Well, the center, the center of your roll. Correct, nine inches. Nine inches. So, I mean, you got nine inches hanging over, but it's actually not touching. It's hanging over, so you're using up nine inches on the upside, nine yeah, inches on the downside. Yeah, but just to install it, I mean, how many feet do you really need? We need a skid steer uh, reasonably. If well, yeah, you need something steer. to handle it, unless you, unless you. Uh, See, that's the problem. We permit it based on it being put in by hand. They need a skid steer. Now we know for the next project we permit. Well, I mean, not not necessarily. I th I think one thing that I'd like to just share, and I'm sure you've seen it on other projects. Given the existing conditions of that crossing, proximal to the vernal pool, there's a lot of rock there. So I think in that particular area, a silt fence, a two and a half foot tall silt fence, probably wouldn't have been the best bet anyway because you wouldn't have been able to trench it in. You would have had to bring in material yeah. to backfill it. So in this case, with 18 inches, it gives you enough freeboard to allow for anything to sediment up against it. So I, th I think in this particular application, the silt sock is, is a good uh, application in this area. I really do. Otherwise, we would have been digging in rock, and then that would have been un unstabilizing the side slopes. Okay. Except that it should have been on the downslope of the work, not at the top of the work, and then to have another five feet beyond on each side to make it a, a 30 foot crossing. But the point is, because they used a skid steer, that's the only reason that happened. Yeah. It was actually an excavator that went through there. <laughs> and then a skid steer. Okay, all right. Um, so that, I guess that's, that's gonna be narrowed up then? That, that crossing that is gonna be narrowed? I didn't walk out there that day. Well, the, I, I, I don't, the, the crossing, the crossing is as, 20, should be 20, 20 feet the crossing? Uh, the cross, yeah, it was 20 or 20. 20 feet, 20 not, 20 not 20 feet. feet from here to here and then another five feet. The whole crossing is 20 feet. I mean, you guys should know it by heart by now. I, I have dozens of projects to remember, but. The, uh, the gravel road itself is 16 feet wide. They allowed us to narrow it down to 16 to pass through this section. And so how wide is it right now? I'm not saying on the paper, I'm saying in the field, how wide is it? 
I'll, I'll, I'll bet it's that it's ways. about 25 to or more. Lisa, when we measured it, we measured it from 30. The, the slope. We measured yeah. the slope, and that was 30 feet. Twenty feet. Twenty feet. narrowest point. Center to center. Right where it uh, crosses the uh, in front so of the ground. It's pool. supposed to be twenty feet from here to here, not from here to here. Well, if yeah, this is you're 20, measuring if you're measuring up across <laughs> and then down, Jim. No, no, no. You're getting, you're Lisa, getting a linear. Lisa and I measured and it's thirty feet from here. Did you did you measure straight up this way and straight up that way? Across the top? No, straight, straight across from, from we here used to, tape. to here. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is he's saying from here up to here or well, across let, No, 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 down. no. We measure. I, we let, took a Todd, uh, let Todd and I go out there. I mean, we could talk up. about it all night, but yeah, let it, Todd and I get going. The reality going. is okay. it varies in width, but the narrowest point is 20 feet. As we come away from the wetlands and away from the um, pool, it kind of does this as you approach where the array is going to be. Lisa, you know what what the what we're here and um, okay. Yeah, you can come with us if you want. Um, well, that will be next week. You can give me a call. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm gonna be early in the week. Okay. Oh yeah, you're retired. You have a life. <laughs> no, it's it's called an out of state graduation. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we have to see what the audience has to say. Um, the Conservation Commission uh, discussed that project yesterday, and uh, we took Stormwater, you took me. Yes, excuse me. The Stormwater Committee met yesterday, and we discussed it. We didn't take action on it because we knew they were coming here tonight, and obviously we didn't want to get involved in making decisions when we didn't know what CONCOM was going to do. So I'm going to start with an email. March 29th. 2022, 4.25 p.m. This is Todd Pilling writing to Dave Cowan. Dave, the conservation agent and I walk part of the site today. We have a couple of questions. We see the bean poles with the red and white flagging marked LOW, limit of work. And about four feet inside of those are bean poles with orange flagging marked erosion control. It is the intention to clear trees four feet beyond the erosion? beyond the erosion controls. Question two, some of the limit of work and erosion control stakes a couple of hundred feet west of the wetland crossing on the north side are within 25 feet of the wetland flags. Dighton Conservation has a 25 foot no touch buffer. No trees may be cut within 25 feet of the wetlands. The stakes need adjustment. Next email is dated March 30th, the next day at 8.21 a.m., and it's Dave Cowan responding to Todd Pilling. And uh, copied with Lisa and Kay. Uh, good morning, Todd and Lisa. Glad to hear you were able to get out to the site to review the staking. I've shared your observations with Kay and the team and we are looking into them. We will get back to you as soon as we have responses, hopefully later today. Best regards, Dave. That was March 30th. The next email is Thursday, March 31st at 8.54 a.m. Good morning, Todd and Lisa. I've spoken with both Kay and Chris Ryan at Meridian, the engineers doing the staking. And I've been advised that the areas you identified will be revisited, and they will let us know once they have made the corrections in the field. Thanks very much for making us aware of these issues. Best regards, Dave. March 31st. The next one I'm going to read is May the 4th, 2022, at 2.59 p.m. Lisa talked about no response and the big gap in time. These are all sequential e emails on the same if you will, running list of emails. 
This is Todd. And again, he's, he's contacting Dave. Dave, installation on the erosion control has begun, but we haven't received clarification on the issue of limit of work slash erosion control lines as outlined below. No response to that. That's May 4th. May 5th, this is Todd again, writing to Dave. Dave, I went by again today. Apparently the people doing the installation of the erosion control weren't up to speed. In the area of the 16-foot vegetative management drive at the Vernal Pool, which is supposed to be 20-foot wide of clearing, now has erosion controls located 25 feet apart. The clearing is so wide the surveyor stakes and wetland flags have been removed. The following items need to be resolved ASAP. Respond to the limit of work slash erosion control question. Rehang the wetland flags in this area. The erosion controls will need to be relocated to the correct position. A plan needs to be prepared immediately for restoring this disturbed areas outside of the allowed area of work. And the plants, plants need to be planted this emphasis on this spring. No tree cutting will be allowed to commence until all of the above items are rectified. The limit of work slash erosion control staking needs to be resolved immediately as they are in the process of installing. Restoring four feet wide of vegetation around the entire perimeter of the site may be problematic. Please advise on your intentions as soon as possible. So as a result of all those communications. So the, Dave, the one that. He never responded. He, that, he must have left. No, no, this is after May 4th. He was there at May 4th. No, no. Wait, so that was. In, March then, March was his. Well, his the last communication from Dave is dated March 31st. When was uh, Dave let go? Uh, he wasn't let go. He was never a permanent employee of Fairway. He was a contractor and took on another job a couple of weeks ago. So I think it was not last And so, uh, so your, your company then never... Uh, uh, got all the information from him, never requested it or got it from him. It no. seems pretty obvious that, that he was given uh, very accurate information as to what to do and it was blown by the company. I'm not sure to say that. I mean, a lot of us were copied on those emails and uh, Dave was running point on that and transferred over and Dan Paul Allman, who was the project developer, uh, was in several communications with, with Todd right around that time because he wanted to keep the communication hot in his own words. And so I, I'm not sure if Dan CC'd all the correct people, but I thought I was under the clear impression that he was, he was being very responsive to Todd. Uh, you said Dave works for another company. Dave Collins? Well, this is my. I, yeah, Dave Collins. Uh, you said he worked for an independent company then working for you? Yes, a contractor. What what contract did he work for? Or does he work for? Uh, I don't recall the name. I have to look that up. Mr. Chairman, I want to repeat this. March 31st. This is Dave responding to Todd. I have spoken with both Kay and Chris Ryan at Meridian. Are they still employed on this project? Yes, they are. Thank you. The engineer is doing the staking, and I've been advised the areas you identified will be revisited. And they, they'll, they'll, that's more than one person, I assume it's the two people named in this email, they'll let us know, let Dave Cowan and the rest of them know, once they have made the corrections in the field. Thanks very much for making us aware of these issues, okay? Then there's the gap until May the 4th. Well, obviously, Dave is probably gone because Todd's writing to him and not getting responses. If Todd had gotten communications from anybody else in response to the concerns he raised, he wouldn't have continued writing to Dave. So 
as far as other emails, I can only print the se sequence in which these were sent. And she referenced a big gap in communication. Well, here it is, March to May. Now, when that communication came in, and I read, I was copied on this um, about what has happened. Um, it was clear that the Stormwater Committee had to do something. And obviously, we didn't want this to wait until yesterday's Stormwater Committee meeting. It just so happened. And, and in, this, in this communication, when Todd said he needed the plan, which I assume that's what this is, um, he wanted it by this past Monday. And um, uh, I, I think the, the, uh, this, this letter with the, the, those little plans here, they're attached, dated uh, May the 16th. Um, the Stormwater Committee had a posted meeting, but it was supposed to be a workshop to work on revision of the bylaws and regulations. Town Hall was closed. It was late Thursday. Monday morning, bright and early, probably 9 o'clock, um, I went to the Town Hall because the workshop meeting was scheduled for 10 o'clock that day. I revised the agenda and put down that we would be meeting with uh, the, the folks at, uh, uh, relatives to the Rujo's project, um, notified the Stormwater Committee um, and the Arujos and um, Selectman's Office, uh, I think the Town Administrator, Board of Health, everybody, whoever gets involved with these things. Um, we did have the meeting. And again, um, I read what Mr. Pilling had stated. So my question is, anybody in the room that can answer this, respond to the limit of work erosion control question. Is that what this is with the little plants attached? That's the last thing on the list. A plan needs to be prepared immediately for restoring the disturbed areas outside of the allowed area of work and the plants need to be planted. I heard that tonight, and I heard that yesterday. I'll go back to question one, or when he's requested. The following items need to be resolved ASAP. Respond to the limit of work slash the control question. Total, total width. That would be the survey that took place the next day after our site visit. Where's that response? Well, no, I think Tom wants to know about the whole, like, was the entire erosion control, the rest of it, that's outside of CONCOM jurisdiction, was that all installed where it was supposed to be, or was that in also installed the way this one was installed with a... No, it was not. We made the silt sock, the silt sock, the edge, we did not go past the silt sock at all. Okay, well, Todd's going to want to inspect it and... We're going to want to take a walk out there. Respond to the limit of work slash erosion, erosion control. May 20, March 29th. Conservation agent and I walked out of the site today. We have a couple of questions. We see the beam holes. This is about the flagging. The limit of work. Is the intention to clear cut trees four feet beyond the erosion, beyond the erosion controls? Is that a yes or a no? No. Looking for a response to the questions. Don't expect to read all of this when there's simple questions, yes and no. Next question. Some of the uh, limit of work in erosion control stakes a couple of hundred feet west of the wetland crossing on the north side are within 25 feet of the wetland flags. Dighton Conservation has 25 foot no touch buffer. No trees can be cut within 25 feet of the wetlands. The stakes will need adjustment. Have the stakes been adjusted? Yes. Again. It's on the plan. I guess a no answer would have been, yes, take a look at the plan. I, I, the plan I wasn't agree. given to us yesterday. I'm I talking stormwater. I'm not through. Looking at question or, or marking here, of rehang the wetland flags in this area. Been done? Are they in the right position? 
Uh, they've been done, but I don't know if they're in the right position. Because you've got to go out and look again. Yeah. You and Todd. Okay. Erosion controls will need to be relocated to the correct position. Is this what this plan is? Erosion controls will be relocated. The erosion controls on the, uh, where the stakes have been moved, there's a proposed erosion control that would be in the correct The position. erosion controls will need to be relocated to the correct position. So on this plan, plan there's two of them now, the two sections. The correct position of those erosion controls are now in this plan. Two, in, plans, two pages here. In, uh, in area one for the crossing, what is depicted on this plan is the erosion controls as they've been installed and will be inspected by Todd and Lisa. If as, as a result of the inspection, they Installed or reinstalled? As they've been installed they, previously. As they have been installed as of today. So it's a reinstall. Did they get moved since the site visit we went on? Well, which, which area are we talking about? Area one. Did, did so they... area one, we are not touching. We, no. the, the, the remediation okay. plan has to be approved before we're doing right. anything. That's what I thought. So again, gentlemen, from a Stone Water standpoint, we did not take action because we knew they were coming here tonight. My major concern is that a vital member of the team left to go somewhere else. It's clear that in here, he's referencing other people. They didn't respond either. So because there was no response, there's a chain of command, I'm not sure if you're, if you're familiar with that. There's a chain of command, just like I'm sure you have a chain of command. They didn't respond, that's my point. I responded to Dave Count, whether or not he turned around and responded to Todd, I don't know. If you're talking about your company or a big operation, the person at the top, if something happens, there's a chain of command. The next one steps up, and everybody should know what's going on. When Mr. Cowan left, no one responded. Are you telling me nobody should access any of his email? Now, other people were mentioned in his email. No one responded from March until May. I'm not, I'm not addressing this to you particularly. I'm saying to you. I think Daniel brought all of the project developer did. Uh, twice to talk and respond. If he responded, there would have been no reason for Todd to keep sending emails to Mr. Cowan. He should have got an automatic response, actually. Didn't get that either, like, I'm, uh, I'm no longer art. The other thing, too, is he did get it, because I got it when I sent him emails. He did get an automatic response and said he's no longer with the company. All, all I can tell you is with the emails that I printed, that I was copied on, that Mr. Billings sent today. But I think there might have been subsequent emails that perhaps you weren't copied on that they had sent directly to Todd that we don't, we don't have here tonight. Right? Well, my point is, yeah. Todd is still writing to him, and if Todd had been told he wasn't there, he wouldn't have been writing to him. The other thing, too, is I really think if somebody had responded, Sometime between the end of March and when the communication started up again in May, we wouldn't have gotten to the point of, in, a, in an effect, start shutting it down. There were no responses. On the it says he wants the following items need to be resolved ASAP. This one stated the 5th of May. So from the end of March, Todd is still reaching out trying to get Dave. It would seem you must have somebody that's in charge of your email system, a system administrator, who could have gotten into his messages. Suppose the man passed away and it was vital information there. He was there until very, very recently, so there's something else. Well, yeah, that makes it worse because now he's an employee, he's on the payroll and he's not responding, and, he, and the people he mentions in email, no one responded. And we never, I don't know if why he never talked to me about this. Well, I, all I can tell you is what I read. Yeah, I read verbatim, okay? The major concern that came up at the Stormwater Committee. Well, 
Secretary. Gentlemen, the major concern that came up at the stormwater committee meeting is communication, all right? When we went out there and Mr. Digit, you were on site, it was clear that somebody didn't get the message. And, and it was explained to us about the weight and the size of those big uh, wattles. I call them green snakes. We understood that. However, there was a plan in place. And there were things that weren't communicated. We understand that. This is a litany of the, the stormwater agent and the conservation agent having made site visits that trying to get responses. Now, I don't know when Mr. Cowan left. They're telling me he was there, but whatever. The fact of the matter is, when we had our pre-construction meeting, it was clear there was a, in place controls and who reports to whom and everything else. It's already failed. It's already failed. Whatever you decide to do, the Storm Audit Committee will wait to see. But I just want you to be aware that the stormwater agent and the conservation agent are gonna be spending an awful lot of time on this site to make sure that what the plans say and what is actually being done is what's supposed to be done. There should have been no reason for this second set of maps to correct the, the errors that were done because it wasn't done right the first time based on what's over there. We have a history with another solar farm in this town that is still not online, and I don't know if it's ever going to get online, simply because plans were not followed, and it's being held up because they're still not in compliance. We don't need another one like that. This project and any subsequent ones that have to be followed closely. So I just want you to be aware of that because this is going to be on our agenda every month for who knows when, even if it's only an update. But we haven't even truly, I'll call it broken ground. Yeah, this, they've cut a road in there, but we haven't seen land cleared because we can't because there are other problems right now. The goal is to get these farms built up and running, but at what expense to the town of Dighton? So all I'm saying to you is, you have your decisions to make. We're waiting to hear from you. What you do is obviously going to affect us because we will be, you have obviously the rules that you have to enforce and we have the ones for the town. So I just want you to know, we've had similar discussions on site. That day we went out there, Mr. Digis was with us. We had it yesterday at the Stormwater Committee meeting. And I just want you to know, here it is, number three. I wonder how many more we're going to have. I think the company needs to really get the troops together and make sure the people who need to know need to know. And it shouldn't be this kind of stuff. Anybody could leave or have something happen that they're incapacitated, but somebody else has got to step in. Yeah. It can't be months and months before we get a response. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Jack, uh, why don't you come over here for a minute? Lisa, would you come over here too? Okay. I just want—I just want to. Uh, um, this is just uh, when Lisa and I measured. When Lisa and I measured, this was thirty. We measured thirty feet from here to here. This this was the 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 area of of disturbance. On the plan that appro that's, that, that's approved right there, the total driveway is supposed to be 15. Now, if they had something here and here, but they but they're still another 15 feet beyond. How now, many, if they yeah, how many feet were you allowed beyond the erosion controls on the approved plan? The, Does Todd ask that specific they went 30, question? They went. They're, they're, they're up here somewhere. I mean, this roadway here is, is I don't know, 25 feet maybe up here. And, and uh, now, this is what it's supposed to be, 15, the, act, the actual driveway, the roadway, 15 the, the, feet. The finished driveway is 16 feet wide. Okay, well, I, I did it 15. Right. That, that's, that's done close. 
So why is it taking 30 feet to do, to do a 16 foot? Which, well, when I measured it earlier, I got 20. Depends on which no, no. This is this is what we measured in the field. The third. At what point? Because it varies. Yeah. Uh, at at the vernal pool, it no, was thirty it, feet. It varies because the vernal pool ang the angle. Yeah, the mean but angle it, it was it, where, where we measured it was it was thirty. So right here, there's I, water. I didn't know right here, there's That's water, and this is in the water. water. This part is in the water right here. I, what you got to go off of, Jim, is the the area. The limit of work, wherever the limit of work is, um, you're not supposed to exceed it with whatever you want to call them, wattles, silk fence, yep. hay bales. So the limit of work, so right here's the rental pool. I'm going to just go from the midpoint yep. of the rental pool. The red line represents the approved limit of work. You got 30 feet. The hay bales from center to center at this point are like 20. Wait, wait, you said the you I'm put you put, you put the you put the ruler in the vernal pool. No, no, no. I'm just showing oh, you that this, oh. this red end, line. He's got yep. the end of the thing that there. On either side, that represents the, uh, the the approved limit of work. So if I start at zero on the line, okay. I'm over to here, it's a little bit beyond 30 feet at this point. But you see, it varies. It's a little bit under, a little bit under, and then the, the sort of the back and forth zigzag line represents the installed erosion control. So if I go center to center, at this point it's 22. It gets as close as 20, like that. So, so you can see how it kind of varies. Like that. Uh, okay. But the, the limit of work, like we said, it just represents, uh, it gives you a space if you have okay. to like step over a, a little bit to, to get this trenched in properly. It okay. doesn't mean that you, you can clear trees up to that point. It just, it's room to maneuver beyond the erosion control barrier. Right. Uh, so everybody agrees, and you, you guys all know that the contractor never should have used waddles. Whatever equipment was in there to put those in. Well, I we mean, we used an excavator to move the stone. That's what we moved. And, and the, the trees that were out back at location two, that was actually done by, the, they were cut at an angle. That, those were done by the surveyors because they had to make a path to do to stake the area um, because we all talked about it and we all walked it and then those were all cut at a, the, the smaller ones were all cut with a machete or whatever they carry to survey to put their stakes out okay um, if we give approval for the for the restoration but Lisa is going to go out there. I may be going out there as well, depending upon what day they go. And she will only approve with if certain conditions are met, and that is if they pull those water. Uh, I'm assuming if they pull the waddles and um, and bring in uh, that that roadway is 16 feet and uh, uh, a steeper slope. Now, they're talking about removing the, um, the fill in the wetlands and in the vernal pool later this year after the eggs hatch and the frogs are gone. And, and yeah, the but there's still fill along the roadway that isn't in the vernal pool, but it's in the vernal pool buffer zone, so we still need to talk about that. Well, that's, that's, that's all part of it, right. because the vernal pool is 100 feet beyond the high water mark. So that whole area, so from the water, 100 feet on both sides. Mm -hmm. yep. and, that, and that includes the other side of the drive. I know. So they have to pull it in uh, and, and make it much steeper. If they go 20 feet and then have the 16 foot. But that's, uh, uh, they're going to have to show you that for us. But they're going to have to get permission to to stop that reduction. Yeah, the road was existed. The road, the road existed. And, and they reestablished, they're, they're, the, the road existed. Yeah, but not 30 feet wide. No, but um, it was uh, during the, um, a 
are you thinking that we're building up the area to build the new um, drive? I don't know if you're building up or but certainly out. No, we're actually, we were, uh, that was one of the things in the approval process, we were mandated to maintain the existing grades that are out there. Yeah, we, we went back and forth about that like a dozen times. Yeah. Are you sure you're going to be able to do it at this grade? Yeah, so um, that's that's the way the proposed grades are okay. right We're not like building up an embankment or anything. But anything removing like large rocks and things and you're changing the grade. So then I'm wondering, are you maintaining the grade? Well, I mean, the road, or, they're not in the road, they're on the sides of the, the stones. There's a lot of stones. And, and actually, while we're talking about there's stone walls going through where the array is going to be. So we need to have further talks about all of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But from our, I, I, th I think to circle back regarding communication, you know, we talked about this yesterday. And, you know, th there's, I, this is the first time, yesterday was the first time I, I, I've been here in the town of Dayton. <laughs> I'm the wetlands guy. And you never want to come back. No, no sir. I, 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 I'm, the wetlands, I'm the wetlands guy, so I appreciate this stuff. Um, and that's why we developed, you know, I heard about this last Wednesday. I was on site Thursday. You had the plan on Monday. So I understand and I appreciate the importance that went wetlands afford. Um, you know, that's why there's four of us in this room. You know, I'm the wetland scientist. You have the site contractor, you have the owner, and you have the engineer. Okay, so we understand there was a break in communication. There's four of us here right now. The owner of the project has not only, you know, they're, they're going to agree to this restoration once you got, once the Conservation Commission approves it, they're gonna implement it immediately. They've also agreed to do the bi-monthly. And if it needs to be weekly. Yeah, I mean, maybe. You know, we, we can talk about that. So there, there's a commitment, we understand I think the important thing is that it, the site has been laid out as it was approved. Based on you know what you're seeing on, on these plans. Right here. Okay. The yeah. Okay. Um, do we have a motion? For to uh, public comment. Okay, I well I thought we already had public comment. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, uh, that was town official. <laughs> Oh, no, I thought it was public. Uh, okay. Um, I just want to make clear that whatever you decide relative to this project, it's not over because Todd Pilly also has to agree with whatever has taken place. So if the CONCOM gives you a tentative or conditional okay tonight based on the plan, the next step is that you've got to get back to Todd Pilly. And I'm sure Mr. Pilling and Mrs. Caldonia and maybe Mr. Digit, whoever. If Mr. Pilling is comfortable with whatever has happened and it meets all the stormwater requirements, he'll give you the go ahead. You don't have to wait for us to meet again. But if he has concerns, you may have CONCOM approval, but you've got to get something from him, all right? Because he will be representing the stormwater committee. Thank you. Thank you. That's before the work, um, before before we remediate the areas. That's we need time's approval. That's whatever five years now. Whatever the concom <laughs> does tonight, excuse me. Whatever the concom does tonight, for example, if you give tentative approval, Mrs. Caldonia and I will let Mr. Pilling know. Mr. Pilling is going to look at what you have given tentative approval to, and based on what he finds out in talking to them, if this whole thing comes together then he will say, okay, if there are issues that are stormwater issues, not CONCOM issues, this may not start up again. But I just want that understood, because you've got to act first. Okay. And then Mr. Pilling will act for the stormwater committee, because he's the one who said it's got to stop until we get this resolved, okay? So, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Francis Christopher Fuley, 1730 Wellington Street. I'm going to butter to the southwest of the project. I uh, certainly appreciate Mrs. Goulot's uh, information, and I appreciate you guys reviewing the project. The concern that I have is, you know, this is off to a bad start right from the start. Uh, the, I think you need to have conversations with the other departments and other committees within the town. Uh, the planning board has an order of conditions for this project, which is specific to where the work can actually be done, 
where the limit of work can be done. Uh, there is a buffer. I actually look at this outside my bedroom window, so not very excited about it. And you know, blasting through the woods with an excavator, uh, with with no care of the wetlands or protecting the area of Dighton. Mm -hmm. So I think that the Conservation Commission, the Stormwater Commission, should also confer with other departments, the Building Inspector, the Planning Board, so on and so forth, to make sure the site is actually correct prior to continuing any additional work and excavation. The building official is on the Stormwater Committee, so he is aware and he okay, is- Okay, perfect. Yeah, but, uh, and also a member of the Planning Board, so. Uh, just for public information, the Stormwater Committee is comprised of a representative on the Board of Selectmen. I'm that appointee. In addition, we have the Chairman of the Conservation Commission. We have a representative from the Planning Board because the Chairman resigned, but we still have representation for the Planning Board and who is a voting member. We have the Chairman of the Board of Health. We have a health agent. We have the Highway Superintendent, and we have the Building Commissioner. And in addition to those seven voting members, we have Mrs. Caldonia. We also call in specialists as we need them, police chief, fire chief, if we needed zoning, we would. And quite frankly, uh, both police and fire have been involved with this project and all other stormwater projects. The purpose of the stormwater committee and its composition is so that every department that is vital to something like a solar farm is already involved so when a developer comes in, if they meet with us first, they're actually making an introduction to every committee that is there. I realize they have to meet with them separately, but the stormwater committee is all inclusive. And as I said, we call them specialists as we need them. And the stormwater actually wasn't involved until later in the project. They weren't involved right from the get-go. Oh, yes, we were. And we're going to be there until it's done. And after it's over, it's going to be there. As long as it's a stormwater committee. I think I want. I would like you guys, you know, to hold off on the, on approval of this restoration. Well, if we do something conditional, no. Yeah, you know. yeah conditional is fine. But uh, and I think the the, uh, the conditions are going to be that the maximum uh, surface of the roadway will be. 16 feet from the approved 16 feet uh, that will be the the end design with minimal mm -hmm. slant of the angle um, in all in all wetland areas okay yeah, i mean it's right one, there it's, it's 16 one. feet no, uh, that's there and i know I, I really don't know how much their roadway is because we did the overall disturbance of 30 and it should be it varies. No more than 20. It varies. Um, I, can't, I can't take the measurements by myself, no, is what I'm saying. No, I know. You know. Um, well, if I'm there or if Todd's there, uh, someone you'll go with, you won't go with alone. Okay, do I have a motion that would incorporate that kind of, uh, you, you want to speak some more again? Well, I just making sure we understand the, the process by which we're going to move forward. Mm -hmm. That's, that's all I want. Yeah, you just, right you're going to wait until we have a site, but, well, let's let them make the motion, I mean. Okay, that's fine, but I want to, again, I just want to make sure that, you know, right now we're still establishing the erosion controls. There's no work that can be completed until we're in Right, planning. you can continue to establish the erosion controls around the site. We're completed. Completed? Yes. Oh. So, if this didn't happen, this hiccup, then we would be giving you the one week notice that Todd was asking for. Mm -hmm. To walk the site. Okay. So there's no work. Right, actually, all they're looking for, it's an existing cart path. Yes. Right, but and they're not. That I haven't totally read the plans, but you're not uh, altering the cart path, correct? They have. They have. They have. They have. Um, they haven't they altered have. the surface, correct? As of as of now, yeah. I, we haven't done. But I mean, is, is the cart path going to be what the cart path is? Is that going to be the road? Are you going to cut it? You're going no, to raise it? No, because the fire, the, well, no, the fire department, by regulation, you had to have it 20 feet. And then they allowed us to neck it down to 16 feet to pass between 
Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, in some spots, you're going to use what's there, correct? Uh, uh, further out, Jack, it widens up once they get beyond the wetlands on the paper. Well, now, yeah, okay, I mean, the roadway is 16 feet in wetland area. 16 right, feet. Yeah, yeah, the roadway. Yeah, yeah. And then it widens up. Uh, I don't know how far I didn't go yeah, once you're out of the wetland right, uh, yeah, area. Yeah, yeah. And what what I want to see is that it it's not they don't do 30 feet, they keep it to that 16 feet. Well no, that, they they gotta work within the plan Jim, Within the, the plan way. and yeah. pull we're back. Here, we're here for the restoration. So they can hydro seed it yep. and bring that back. Correct. I mean we're not really here. I'm not sticking up for anybody here, but I'm just stating <coughs> But where uh, they've widened it, they're gonna narrow it. Where they have widened it, they're gonna narrow it. Yeah, but Th that, this this where, is a where good it's wide Jim. They're not gonna dig down to that. They're gonna use the top grade. I know, I know. All right, so what we gotta do is get them to re establish the banks. Correct. Hydro seed it. Plant their bushes. They're not going to touch the banks until the well, fall. Well, you're saying they're going to hydro. Saying, Lisa, you guys are out past. They're supposedly out past where they're supposed to be. Right. So they've got to. This is the restoration is a good start. I mean, we just. I realize that. We need, you know, yeah, obviously, I'd better. like, I'd like to field check the restoration plan before you guys approve it. Well, what I'm saying is, let's. I haven't them, had time this week. It's been meetings. Let's meetings. get them started on the restoration, so then okay. they can stabilize all of that, and then they can go back to work okay. on the rest of the plan. I'd like Lisa to go out there I would too. and to see it even be to make sure to so any other measurements that she can take either with right, me or yeah. with Todd yeah, uh, yeah. to to make sure that uh, it's done according to the plan right yeah and then hydro seeded and then they yeah. then this late summer or fall they will back off on the vernal pool right okay yeah, I mean clean the vernal pool when it's down yeah Okay. Have to there, but let them let them do their restoration to stabilize what's disturbed. Okay. And then go from there. Let's look. I'm looking for a conditional approval uh, based upon Lisa's interpretation. I, I'm someone else will make the motion. Right. Uh, um, to um, not to exceed any limits of the plan, right. and then to hydro seed um, to stabilize. Well, they have right. to exceed the limits of the plan to restore it. Well, if they're going to right, pull it back. Right, right there, Lisa, but they got to stay within the work limits. That's where, you, that's where you come in, Lisa. The restoration is outside the work limits. On the, what's there, but anything after this, it stays within the limits, the work limits. You know what I'm saying? I mean, first of all, there's it, no guarantee. I don't know. Well, it's That's there's supposed to be a guarantee because they're not supposed to exceed the yeah, the yeah, record. That silt talk, it's a clear understanding. No one is going beyond that silt talk. It, after all this, we clearly understand. Well, <laughs> the, the, uh, <laughs> as long as the silt talk is put in. But the it's the silt, yes, and it is because we just did an as bill to verify it is except where you're talking about the 16 foot. So if that's at 20, which I believe it's at 20, we can bring that into 16. But as of right now, we did an as build of what is actually installed and it matches the plans other than where we broke those two locations. And that roadway that's that yeah. wide, that was an existing roadway. Yeah, well that's- no, Yeah, that's no, the only thing where, where would that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but we've had people have a, a, a six foot cart path with a horse and buggy at one time, and now they want to go to 20 feet. <laughs> and it's uh, along our drinking water. Sorry, it doesn't work. All right. Um, okay, do I have a motion to. You better have Jack have make the motion. I'm lost. Well, I mean, if, if we make a motion and give Lisa a conditional motion, a condition, conditional condition of the, uh, of the deal, a motion, um, the, the motion to have Lisa supervise, have them work within the limits and do the restoration 
to stabilize what, what's uh, disturbed. After I've had a chance to look at yeah, the plant yeah, yeah. in the field. I'll check it I, I, yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now, that way they can stabilize what's there. And yeah, well, that's, that's definitely. Yeah. Okay. So I'll reach out to you. I'll be out there next week. Yeah, yeah and if, if you want me to be on site, I'm, I'm more than willing Possibly, if I'm that organized. Thank you. Thank you. Every okay. Every page. Every page. Oh, okay. Where? Down here. Everywhere. Yeah, just sign them all. Um, okay. All right. Can we move this along? I'm getting sleepy. Um, huh? I have an hour's drive. Okay, motion. To, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? No, we have uh, things we have on two the more end. to go. Two more. Two yes, more, yeah. a, I need the motion to adjourn. <laughs> yeah, you got to pay Thank the bills. You, you got to find out about paying the bills. I thought we did that. Oh, you did do it. For the Gazette. Yeah. yeah. I oh yeah. Okay, the Gazette. And uh, then uh, a deal on Clubhouse Drive. Oh. Um. Okay. Okay, discuss invoice receipt from Gannett Corporation. Yeah. You gotta go to Cincinnati, Ohio now. Uh, Lisa, you, you, that's something to do with you? Or? She's, she's in the this. ladies' room. <coughs> uh, not this one though, right? <laughs> No. Okay, make sure everything is signed there. Look, look at it and uh, make sure I got them all. This is concerns the, the way we've been advertising. Yeah. The Conservation Commission is responsible technically for all ads placed in oh. the, the Gazette. Yeah. But it's changed hands again at Corporation. Uh, we could, or Gatehouse Media, they called it. Yeah, we were paying directly, making uh, uh, applicants pay directly to Gatehouse and avoiding us getting billed for anything. Now, Gannett uh, is, a, is a parent corp. They own Gatehouse Media and a lot of other newspaper. Yeah. And they're in Cincinnati, Ohio. They changed <laughs> the, the payment uh, for yeah. ads. They're billing us directly. Oh, we yeah. have seven hundred dollars worth of bills that uh, came in with the last uh, uh, bill. Oh, well. Really? And actually, these are they've been paid individually, and they're having a hell of a time paying. Oh yeah. Uh. <laughs> Multiple complaints on that. Yeah. It's insanity. <laughs> um, should we get a copy? We do have a copy of all their receipts, right? Oh yeah, I mean we require them. So he got you got one tonight. That I, guy went right to the wire. I got a couple. Yeah. Yes. Check whichever ones you have. Yeah. Uh, I do have a, a contact now with the Gannett uh, uh. area or office that uh, runs us ad payments. They shouldn't make it that difficult to collect money. Yeah, Totten can't do it, huh? Well, yeah, they've had to make umpteen phone calls because well, it's not local anymore. Who prints the paper? Where, where do they print the paper for? Really? I don't know. I know the Gazette doesn't print anything anymore. But. Okay, so so we're going to check all of that then, and um, well, I've got a contact now at Gannett, and I'm going to. Uh, uh, okay. It's going to be an email contact because that's all I have. Okay, who else, uh, what else is there on? There's nothing uh, I else. got a couple of correspondents. Okay. So we got a response from CEC who did the um, Clubhouse Drive cleanup. And... Um, oh, yeah, there's one more thing. Yeah. So they talked about what was done, the absorbents that were put down, um, permanent solution. This is Clubhouse Drive? Yeah. Okay. Um, basically, um, the oil spill. Yeah. Yes, the oil, the oil spill. spill. 
Details regarding the assessment and remediation activities are located in the May 2022 immediate response action completion statement. Um, this report is available for public viewing and it reads uh, the file viewer found at https uh, colon backslash backslash EEA online dot EEA dot state dot MA dot US backslash portal number symbol exclamation point backslash search backslash waste site. A site plan showing the disposal site boundaries and the re release notification form are attached. Public involvement opportunities are available under 310 CMR 40.1403 section 9. If you have any questions regarding this matter, please contact me, William Hoyerman, licensed site professional at 774-501-2176. He works for civil and environmental consultants incorporated. So we received this on May 11th and the town received it as well. Board of Health and um, this was actually sent to the town administrator. I just wanted to read that for the record. Um, can I move on to the next correspondence? Um, we received, we were given this letter by the planning board, uh, 2016 Massachusetts Small Municipal Separate Stormwater Sewer System General Permit, Administratively Continued Permit Coverage from the US EPA. Permit, dear permit holder, you are receiving this letter because stormwater discharges from your municipal separate stormwater system, MS4, are currently authorized under the 2016 Mass Small MS4 Permit, which is a Mass MS4 Permit, which will expire on July 1st, 2022, in accordance with Part 1.6 of the Mass MS4 Permit. The Mass MS4 Permit will be administratively continued on July 1st, 2022. The Mass MS4 permit will remain in force and effect for discharges that were authorized prior to July 1st, 2022, until such discharges are authorized under a reissued permit, an individual permit, or other alternative general permit. No action is required at this time. You are to remain uh, time to remain covered under the Mass MS4 permit. If you have any questions regarding this matter, please contact Newton Tedder. Tedder.newton at epa.gov at US EPA or Laura Schiffman, Laura.schifman at mass.gov. She's at, at mass.dep. Um, and this was signed sincerely, Lynn Jennings. She's a water permits branch of the water division of the US EPA. That, um, that's so. Clubhouse Drive that you were talking, this last one. This last one was just the MS4 permit uh, renewal for the town. Okay. It, it doesn't apply to you, that's no. stormwater. I yeah. don't know why it came here. That yeah. is strictly stormwater. It, was, it landed on my desk, so I figured I'd read it. It was read at the beginning yesterday. Yeah. All it says is the permit is going to continue. Thank you. And then I just have one more item, which I didn't, I should have read earlier, but um, I saw a disturbance on 621 Center Street and I received an email from Nancy. I had followed up previously before that with Todd and Todd, um, Todd and the building and official, um, Hi everyone, I draw, this is from Nancy. I drove by the, can I read it? I can tell you that it's farmland that they're moving some soil around. It will not violate the stormwater bylaw, but they're trying to improve some drainage on farmland so that it can be planted without water being there. So that's what they're doing, and they're not gonna distribute uh, 35,000 Yeah, well, um, I received a call from DEP today in an email 
they received a complaint. So um, I got to follow up with her tomorrow. But um, Todd Pilling responded um, that he spoke with the owner and you know the field is holding water. That he said there's a pipe under Center Street and um, this field is collapsed. He's trying to get the water to flow to the east. He will be putting loam back down, no change in use, no tree removal and Arujos will rent it again this year. He would like the DPW to add their repair list to the repair list cleaning out or replacing and or replacing the cover. He has not previously spoken with Tom about this. Sincerely taught. So um, yeah, it's it's definitely within our jurisdiction, but it's an agricultural activity. I think um, if there is a culvert that needs to be replaced by DPW, Tom knows the process now. We've spoken about it. That you know, if he has a repair, he needs to, you know, file the correct. You I, know, I spoke to one of the property owners. He believes the culvert just needs to be cleaned. Great. He can see somewhat daylight through there, but. So that's know. maintenance? Yeah. He figures if it was maintained, if it was routed out or blown through, or, you know. A lot of whole. water moving around this town. Well, no, I mean, it's just, you know, yeah. right where it sits and all the humus and yeah. just over the years it, it fills up. But, I think that culvert was replaced not too long ago. Okay. I mean, probably within the last 15 years or better. Well, a, I'll call DEP back, Jawe back from DEP, and so she can um, respond to the person who made the complaint. Yeah. I right. don't know the details of where the culvert is or whatever, but I'll tell her what I do know. Yeah. It's right in the corner. Of where the field comes up and then intersects the tree line, it's right there. So. Yeah, on the east end, <coughs> obviously. Uh, on I mean, the west be, end. Be on the west. Be on the west, west end on the north side, I guess you'd say. Yeah. So. So. Okay. Are we all set? Do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion at 10:02. I'll second it. All in favor? Thanks. Aye. 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 Aye.